Warning, the views expressed on this show are not those of Disneyland or any of its affiliated companies. This is a talk show that does not represent any single other organization or club. These are idiots talking about stupid shit. If you're under the age of 18, tune the hell out. Well, hello, everyone. I'm like, what are you doing a countdown for? I'm looking at the video. I can tell when it's over. I was telling you when I was switching it. Oh, well, uh, when we're... Yeah, who cares about that? We just need to know when to talk. All right. Uh, so I'm here today, and my name is Jake. And Tom, is your mic working? Yep. Oh, Tom's here. <laughs> see, Missy's Tom's, here. Uh, who else is here? <laughs> and and Stefan. <laughs> and Stefan. Did you see Tom's uh, new mic cover there? Yeah, the little uh, it's a little it's a little blue. A little blue. It looks like he's giving head to a Smurf. It's my blue ball. <laughs> <laughs> easy, easy, Steph. We have a lot of conservative people in the uh, in the in the in the listenership tonight. Oh well, then they're. I mean, I might be politically conservative, but uh, as far as humor humorously, I don't think we're too conservative. So yeah. that might be an issue. You fixing my headphones, there, miss? All right. Yeah. I'm blowing a blue Smurf, but he's got the red tip. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, so Steph, have you uh, have you uh, paid it to any attention to the guests that we have coming on tonight? Uh, I will uh, be completely honest and say not very much, but I am I am slightly fluid in the conversation tonight. <laughs> you just gotta you just gotta be on the on the deck there and just ready to go. Absolutely. Okay. Well, I mean, Steph, what, what would you call yourself politically? Uh, I'd say probably lean closer to being a liberal. Really? Yeah. I mean, I guess, I guess now that I think about all of our past conversations, I guess, I guess we could say that you would be that. Tom, what's your political leanings? I don't know. I'm kind of 50-50. You're like a like, moderate. Like, yeah, I like liberal, conservative. I'm not very conservative, though. I'm probably more liberal than I am conservative. Then why do we always get labeled as a conservative show? I don't know, because I'm not very conservative. Maybe some of our guests? I guess. And Maybe I pretty somebody... much say what but, I but, feel. I mean, no, but I, hold on. Let me be straightforward with myself. I am. I am very. I'm. I'm very. You know, uh, uh, libertarian. I. I don't believe in anybody telling anybody else what they could do as long as it's you know not, not hurting somebody else. And I'm very financially conservative as as far as where our, the money in our government is going. So I think that's where it's a little bit of a twist because I'm. I'm definitely more. Um, uh, as far as morals for are, are 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 throwing my morals on other people. I don't as long as they're not hurting anybody else or my dog with some of the you know people that we've interviewed on the show. Uh, I really don't care what they're doing as long as they – I think people should be, you know, if they do hurt other people, that they should be taken care of severely. But, you know, politically, I'm pretty libertarian, and uh, morally, I'm pretty liberal. I mean, I don't tell you what to do. You don't tell me what to do. And, uh, you know, if you want to say that you're a furry that look, likes to, you know, bang Bob's big boy stuffed animals, <laughs> I don't see anybody getting hurt, so that's on you. Yeah, that's pretty much how I am. I don't really care what other people do as long as you're not hurting me or my – Family what about friend. what about government financially? Uh, financial, uh, where, where do you fall on that? I mean, you know, you know, like funding for uh, Brandon. What's some crazy funding that our government funds? Um, there was a study for uh, cocaine and sex habits for quails. Was one of the studies cocaine that and sex habits for quails? Yes. Now, so that's something I am opposed to funding because I don't care if pimp daddy crackhead quails. Act any different? I mean, what's the point there? Because Wait. they're really not testing that. You know, that money's just going to yeah. the Somewhere government. Else. Okay, yeah. okay, so you agree that the government blows money left and right? Oh, I definitely think they do, Steph. Well, I, I just feel like if I worked for the government and they wanted to pay me to get quails high <laughs> and <laughs> see, what kind of, sure, why the fuck not? And you know, they're paying; it's on their dollar. That, Brand, you, you know, and you know that somebody dollar. making it's six figures dollar. doing that shit. Brandon, can we? And there's cocaine everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fucking win Brandon can we get together some uh, bullshit study that we want to do and like get some government funding for it 
uh, something with American at, Americans at theme parks. I'm sure we could do a study there. Sure, why not? We, uh, I'll, uh, I'll look into getting some uh, grants. Okay, all right, all right. So, anyways, uh, we've got some East Coast guests on the. I mean, the Philippines are east of us, right, Brandon? Uh, the Philippines are um, uh, fifteen hours ahead of us. Fifteen hours ahead of us, but, okay. but I believe our guest actually uh, resides in New Orleans. And so he's okay. All right, he's a okay. So, so we have a couple guests coming on the show. We have Dion Cheney, correct? Which Dion Cheney is is a very uh, uh, a very interesting guy that's been popping on on our radar lately and been popping around on the media. Uh, he's been known for dropping these Trump banners. Oh, oh at Disney. He did it at Disneyland. Yep. I, I believe he did it at uh, uh, Robert De Niro's. Broadway play of Bronx Tale. Uh, he did it at the Broadway play of Frozen. He's done it off of some bridges in New York. He just does it all over the place, and he's been getting a lot of media attention for it. So I'm, I'm kind of curious. I want to see what happened. I'm especially interested in the Disneyland story because, you know, we have our Disneyland not legal affiliation or fandoms <laughs> of Disney. I want to know how he even got it in there. That's yeah, I'm I, curious about that, too. That's what I want to know. I bet, so, uh, yeah, Jack, you can go ahead and get Dion on the phone. Yeah, but we'll go ahead and go to him now because he is he's already up. Mm-hmm. All right, well let me unmute him. Hang on. Let me get the let me get situated here. Shout out to Adam X, by the way. Adam X. Who's watching? Yeah, we did we did we did uh meet we met Adam X at the parks on Sunday and he's a, a listener from uh La Quinta. Great guy. La Quinta. You know you notice how how I'm white and I can just like, you know, put the authentic Hispanic spin on that word. Let me La hear Quinta. You roll your R there. I can't roll an R for shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so on the phone we got Don Cheney. Don, how are you doing? Dion, doing well, thank you. Oh, Dion, my, I'm sorry about that. I was I was looking at my uh, Democratic staff that put up bad notes. Hey. <laughs> no, okay. I'm just kidding. So, so Dion, um, you know you have been in the media lately. Um, have Have you been getting noticed and quite a bit of attention? Quite a bit of people trying to uh, get in contact with you with over your banners lately. Yes, lots, lots, and lots of people. Lots of emails, phone calls messages but turn most of them down okay well I'm, I'm glad you're here with us today because i think uh i think your story is kind of interesting to say the least um but but firstly what's what's your background i mean where are you from what's what's your history sure i'm originally from a little nook in chester county pennsylvania called chad's ford but now i'm currently living in new york city i have a background in marketing oh uh, uh, internet technology, software, you know, stuff like that. Okay, all right, all right. So, so okay, okay. So you you're probably you probably have a little bit of flexibility in your schedule, kind of work behind a computer and do a, a stuff at, at your own pace at your own time. Um, so first off, I mean, you look to me like you're of the age of somebody that's been around for a few presidents before. Have you ever been this <laughs> this um, outspoken a supporter about presidents in the past? Uh, I'm assuming since you're a Trump supporter. Um, like say George Bush, for instance, or, or you know, uh, have you were you this you know vocal about the Bush administration? Well, I, I would not say this vocal, but I was outspoken with the first and second uh, election of George W. Bush. Yes, yes, yeah, and, and were yeah, you yeah. and were you doing the same type of stuff back then? Were you doing the, this whole this banner idea? No, I wasn't. I mean, I would be out there. When I actually, the, I think it was the second election of George. W. Bush, that was out in St. Louis, held a few signs up, but you know they really didn't go viral back then. You know, you actually had to really earn it. So if you stuck a sign up, the only people that could actually see it were only the people that were driving by. Right. But thankfully, with the technology that's out there available today, you know you can hold a sign up for ten seconds and it can be seen by uh, you know a hundred million people, which is great. Right, right, right. So, so what is so special? For you about Donald Trump, what is so special that you know? You, because obviously, you're taking time out of your own day. I, I I don't think that you're making any money per se off this. It's not like a financial investment. I guess I guess videos going viral. There could be a couple bucks there, but I mean, what is so special about Trump that you're taking time out of your day to go out there and do these things? Because you're doing it all over the place. I've seen you in Florida at Disney World, right? That was Disney World, yeah. and yeah. I've seen you Disney in World, yeah. In, in New York, at New York Plays and all this kind of stuff. And I understand the New York stuff. You live there. Um, so what yeah. motivates you to get out there and do this? Uh, I, I, I think the message that Donald Trump brought from the, from the get-go was just MAGA, make America great again, you know, to uh, bring it back to not ro- roll things back a little. You know, we, we move things forward really quickly with technology. 
you know, in the digital space, but in the analog space, I think it's good to roll things back a little bit. Um, you know, not all the way back to the 1800s, but maybe just sort of pick up on a lot of the things that we, we lost over the last, you know, 50, 60, 70 years. And to, you know, just, um, I, I like his message of just maybe, maybe a, a, a foot in the ass from time to time. Right. You know, a little bit of, a little bit of suffering, maybe not, not so much suffering, but you know, it seems like life has been a little too easy since why, when I grew up back in the eighties. Hmm. Hmm. So, so, you know, we all know, uh, no, no president's perfect. I mean, there's just not going to be a, any president that takes the, you know, position that they're in and, and it's going to make every decision 100% correct. Um, but what what do you think that Trump needs to work on? As far as like, you know, there's been a lot of outrage across party lines, Republican and Democrat, that get upset about some like the, the, the tweets that he does and, and stuff like that. Does any of that bother you at all? No, 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 not at all. If, if Trump stops tweeting, you know, at, at 5 a.m. in the morning and, and at midnight, you know, something's wrong because Trump has always been this person. You know, if you go back and you watch some of the tapes, Back in the 80s, against when he took a lot of rage against Mayor Koch, you know, they were doing the same kind of battles back in the 80s in New York City that they're doing sort of right now with the Democrats and the Republicans. So if, if Trump changes his ways at all, there's there's going to be there's there's definitely something wrong. So, no, I actually like what he's doing with the tweets. OK. And, and you know, and I've been I've known Trump for. Uh, well, I, I'll tell you what. I was a big Howard Stern fan, which is Howard Stern out of New York. And I, and I used to listen to those shows back in the day when, when Trump would come on. And I, for, for me personally, I mean, I didn't, you know, there was no voting for Trump because of his moral stability or, 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 or I mean, people I thought were voting for Trump specifically to get the finances in order to come in like a businessman, start treating the country like a business, and get that crap together. And I kind of didn't expect him to, well, I expected him to kind of change some of that stuff as far as like, his tweets and his public outspokenness, I, I kind of, I assumed that he was going to take the role of being more, as, as, as you could say, presidential. But you think that there's no need for that? No, absolutely not. You know, I, I, I don't really have a, you know, I, I was in the Marine Corps. I, I come from, uh, you know, old school, traditional values, you know, and a foot in the ass from time to time isn't so bad. You know, it's, uh, I call it the, the school of hard knocks. You know, right. it's, it's not so bad to, to live in that space uh, for long periods of time. Do you think he's too direct sometimes? No, not at all. I think that, that the direct, these direct, the, what you call direct, would be what we've been missing for the last 20, 30, 40 years. Because there's been a lot of presidents that have been very direct before the Internet. You know, like Roosevelt, Kennedy... You know, you can you can go you can go Teddy, you go way back. Even Lincoln, he was a very direct person himself. You know, especially when it came to uh, the Civil War. You know, it's just, um, I just think that we've lost, uh, we forgot a lot about a lot of the presidents that used to be direct, and we've become way too politically correct. And uh, I'm very happy that that's gone, or that, we've been losing that as far as from a from a pre presidential space. Okay. Okay. So let's get back to your to your to your banners. Uh, the banners are, are yes. your deal. Where was the first time that you ever dropped one of these banners? Sure. The first time I ever dropped a banner was in Washington Square Park before the inauguration, and it wasn't pretty. Uh, it was just it was the old blue Trump twenty. You know. Oh, sorry. It was, the, it was the just the the blue one that the blue square that he originally came out. The blue right. one. Yeah, the blue one that just said "Make America Great Again," and I put it up in Washington Square Park. And I held it up for a few minutes, and some guy just came up to me and said, "You're not welcome here. You know, this is this is not this is not your place. You don't belong here. Get out of here." And from that moment on, I decided, no, absolutely not, because that sounds like a lot of the things that, you know, have have been persecuted by people over the last few hundred centuries. You know, not welcome here. So no. And so you kind of you kind of took that as a personal almost fuel. Uh, be, because yeah. I, and I and I can't agree with you uh, on this as far as 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 in the kind of middle that I find myself uh, regarding this, I I do uh, agree that it seems like the the left or the Democratic Party or or the Democratic supporters have been so militant in this election of Trump, and and it just seems like I mean to me honestly, Brandon, I don't know if you would agree, but it just seems like they get their panties in a bunch so much easier and they're so less tolerant. As they're screaming at people to be tolerant, right, yeah. right, 
And, and, and I think that uh, being able to be unfettered in your free speech and being able to be outspoken and direct to the American people is why we have one of the lowest unemployment rates in over 50, 60 years. But my question is, is if there was one policy or what policies do you disagree with? With Trump? You're yeah, asking, with Trump specifically. With D- Dion, is there any policies that you don't agree with with Trump at the moment? There's only there's only been one policy that I've absolutely disagree, disagreed with, and that was when he went after the Affordable Care Act, because that was just, you know, there's it's damned if you do, damned if you don't. There was no way to fix the Affordable Care Act. But Other than that, there's not a lot of, you know, there's even when they say with the EPA and things like that, rolling back regulations. No, there, I, I got to say, there's what I'm, about I'm, the with, border like, wall? I'm on the 90, I guess you'd say the 90 percentile of uh, approving of what Trump does. Okay, and and so of course, then that would mean that you agree with the border wall, and I and I believe you know when it comes to that, I mean you know a, a country's only secures its borders, so I mean so we're going to go done. to the nineteen uh, eighties Germany uh, to protect our our country. Okay, because Brandon's <laughs> Brandon sitting in in the studio. Brandon's a, a friend of ours. He's the executive producer on the show, and he's actually running sure. for political office on the Republican ticket. But yes. when it comes to things as far as borders, you don't believe borders should exist. Period. Um, correct. And I believe that if we are going to have borders, that we should have open uh, trade and that, that through economic um, advantage, we will be able to, to do uh, the most as a, as a strong country. Um, that being said, you know, I understand that if we're going to have national borders, we need to secure it. But I think that, you know, this this idea of a, of a wall is a, is a complete waste of, of money because, you know, I mean, most of the people that are here illegally or, or undocumented are here um, through expired visas. So they, they didn't get here illegally. And then, you know, you can build a, a tunnel or, or, or buy a ladder. I mean, there's a million ways that you can get around a wall. I just think that, that there are other ways that we can secure our border without having this blight uh, across the, the but, country. But, Brandon, the thing is, it's the financial strain that it puts on these states. I mean, you know how many, I, I don't know the number off the top of my head, but there's a lot of money in California tax, tax dollars that go to uh, illegal immigrants, whether it's medical, whether it's schooling, whether it's all that kind of stuff. It is a financial burden, especially on the state of California. And, and you also have 150,000 undocumented individuals that were recently uh, registered to vote through the DMV. So I understand that there is a substantial issue that we need to deal with. I just don't personally feel that the wall is the end. Like, look, I, I, I don't agree with um actually i i do agree with a lot of what trump has done but you know the, the wall is one of the things that that we're not going to get mexico to pay for it you know i mean that's just the one thing that that i seriously disagree with him on you know okay well dion I, I, i'm still interested and i want to get to the, your whole disney story here in a second but have you ever sure. been have you ever been arrested doing this ha- dropping these banners have you ever been arrested or taken into custody uh <clears throat> yes, I've only been taken into custody one time, and that was just about 10 days ago. And and what was the premise of them taking you into custody? Because as far as I see it, it's a guy dropping a banner. I don't see where the, the, the illegalness of that is. I know it Free might, speech, absolutely. I know it might piss some people sure. off, and I know that they might get really upset about it, but what laws are they cr- claiming that you're breaking? It was probably like trespassing. No, well, like the... Sorry. Was it something like well, trespassing or... No, no. It was well. The one thing that that really upset. Well, there's a there's there's a lot of security on the on the all the bridges of New York, and there's five bridges that span the uh, East River of New York. You know, the Brooklyn right. Bridge, Manhattan Bridge, blah blah blah. But there's one uh, about two years ago, a couple of Germans they uh, transcended the or they they climbed the the Brooklyn Bridge and they they took the American flag and they turned it into a white flag. I do recall uh, that it was sort of not a surrender flag, but they they just bleached they, they put up a bleached flag. So ever since then, there's been a lot of security in all the bridges. So <clears throat> the laws that were actually broken were uh, none allegedly. Um, yeah, allegedly, as of right now, because I, I probably still have to go to court. Um, <laughs> but um, <laughs> but they, they took us into custody. But what they got us for was posting a bill. And posting a bill. And we didn't actually post a bill. We only hung a flag over the Manhattan Bridge on to, you know, to show the um, the Brooklyn Bridge that we were there. And it was the new banner. It was the new 50-footer that I came out with. 50-footer. <laughs> wow. Yep, 50 okay. Uh, and that's bigger, pretty bold. There's bigger coming. There's always bigger. Bigger, bigger, <laughs> better, better. He's going to be like those guys with that American flag that takes over the whole football field. He's going to yes. be dropping that at the Academy Awards. Love I, it. I'm just, I'm oh, just I waiting did, for it to I happen. I that, too. 
You did the Academy Awards. I, I did that at Yankee. I did that at Yankee Stadium. Um, in I guess it was August. I dropped a banner in Yankee Stadium, and I actually got a thank you from Donald Trump and a phone call from Junior. What? Wow. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just, I, I have a, Did you hear that? Yankees, yeah, yeah, yeah. Really big, they're really big Yankees fans. Really okay. big. Huge, huge Yankees fans. Well, and they're head, he's headquartered out of New York uh, when he's not. Now, now, do you have like a team of guys that are in on this with you? Because obviously your banners are getting bigger than you can hold by yourself. So, I mean, do you have like this 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 war room where you guys are planning the next banner drop and you've got a team that is going with you on these trips? No, I don't. I actually, we, we try not to plan these trips. They're all sort of like, um, you know, spot, last last moment. Because we don't want to know what happened. I actually did have an incident one time at Fenway that I don't want to repeat because I, there were some whispers that came out, and that whispers turned into an incident. Um, so from now on, there's not going to be any words spoken, or most people are not going to know, or even the people that are going to hold one side or the other uh, when the next when the next Trump flag is going to drop or whatever is going to drop that says Trump 2020 on it. See, which is the same thing that sort of happened at Disney. And Disney was a, it was a great great experience, one of the best things I've ever done in my life. Well, see, I want to know how he gets them into these places. Well, you know, okay, and, and I'm sure Dion does not want to, Dion's an ex marine. Uh-huh. And, and, he, and now, uh, and now he's 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 working these covert operations of banner dropping, which is completely Loving harmless it. in my opinion. Uh, so I'm sure he doesn't want to get into details. And uh, to be honest, I've seen the banners in the news, but I didn't know Dion's face until you know earlier earlier this week when we started talking to him because right. I didn't have a face to go with it. So I'm assuming I'm assuming like he goes through Disneyland security just like anybody else. It's simple metal detectors. Um, he could have them folded up in his bag, and they're not going to ask him to unfold a whole blanket. Right. They're just going to press on it to see if there's any metal in there. And if and if and if they start yanking his his banners for that, then I would assume that he just wraps around his body because it's not going to set off the metal detectors. And you know, and he just wears it like a like a, a internal burqa of freedom underneath his shirt. It's going to be pretty difficult to do that when you go to a hundred feet. Yeah, but I mean, I, I'm no, I'm assuming it wasn't too difficult to, for you to get it into Disneyland, right? I'm oh, sorry. Sorry, I missed that one. I, I, I'm assuming that it wasn't too difficult for you to get it into Disneyland. No, of course not. You can bring a cooler of beer into Disney. You know, it's not. I've actually not t- brought a whole cooler, but I brought a 12 pack of beer into Disney World. It's not that hard to get anything into Disney World. This uh, security. Sorry to say, and and it's, it is made out of nylon, and and they're only looking for things that are metal. Exactly. You know, I I hope that there's a day that I actually change the rules that they say, okay, well now we have to search all nylon at Disney. No, please World. don't. That's that's almost what they become. <laughs> I yeah, believe in yeah, the fourth please, amendment. Please don't do that because we go to Disneyland a couple times a month here. Everybody on this show, we're oh, all yeah. we're all Disney annual pass holders, and we hang out there. And believe me, we get we get harassed enough going through security. We <laughs> we don't need to strip down oh, yeah. to our skivvies and get like a TSA finger check. Right. <laughs> Make sure we don't have a flat. Well, I know stuffed the feeling, up our butt. I, I know the feeling, believe me. Support the Fourth Especially Amendment. That, yeah. Okay, so at Disney World specifically, obviously you drop the banner. I've seen the video. The banner goes down, and you're holding it there, and then I see the white hat security start walking up to you. What did they do to you at Disneyland? Well, you know what? I've done this before multiple times at Disney World. In fact, where I dropped that banner before, I've held up flags with a couple friends of mine several times just to get a feeling what it's going to be like, what the reaction is going to be like. Over the last year, a year and a half, actually, no. The first time I held a, a Trump twenty a Trump banner up was before he got elected. Um, but I, I, I almost knew exactly what was going to happen, and what happened was exactly what happened. So, you know, this, so the security guard came up. I knew that, you know, they would just say, take it down. Uh, the person that was holding the banner next to me, I told him to run. Who? Uh, okay, so I, I sort of I'll back up. I'll back up a little, sure. little little step there. The person who I selected, you know, I actually scoped them all morning. You know, I was out there from 9 a.m. until 2 p.m. just standing there looking at who's going to be the person who's going to help me. So, so, you, I, so, I, I uh, so let me let me clarify this. Random? Let me clarify this. You you're go you went into Disneyland and you're looking for people yep. to help you do this, and you're finding them yep. at random at Disneyland. Okay. All right. At, hey, go ahead with the story. Magic Kingdom at Disney World. At Disney World. At Disney World. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. But so, sorry, so, you, yeah, so, what made this one guy stand out to you? I mean, was he like Kanye West wearing the Make America Great Again hat? I mean, why this one guy? No, no. he was. He had a suntan on a, on a, in a tank top, and he had a full suntan. There was no white lines, and he was also wearing a fishing hat. You know, with a fishing hook that said Cabela's on it. Okay. So I knew immediately. That th- this is my guy. I'm gonna follow him around for a little while, and then we we finally just before two o'clock, I went up to him and I said to him, "You look like a Trump fan." He said to me, "How did you know?" 
<laughs> well, you're wearing like the Trump uniform, the Cabela's hat, right. the dance. Yeah, right. Okay. Where's so, the tiki torch? And so, and so, and so, how did that conversation go? No you, tiki torch. Yes. Oh, no tiki torch. <laughs> no, yeah, that was not me saying that racist joke over there. <laughs> okay, but so you find okay. this guy, and how does that conversation go? You break it down what you want to do, and he's just like, "Sure, no problem, let's do it." No, well, yeah, no, exactly. Because I said to him and say, "Do you like Donald Trump?" He says, "Yes, I do." How did you know? And he's like, "Dude, I got posters of him. I got, a, I got, I got <laughs> bumper stickers. I got, I got banners on my wall." And it's like, it's like, cool, man. Uh, it, Sounds like, like a fanboy. He, he sold me. He sold me before I sold him, which was which was right. perfect. So, and then I said to him, "Here's what's going to happen." Then I showed him um, a couple of pictures of the Yankees game. I said, "This is what I did at Yankee Stadium." This is what I'm going to do in, in about five minutes upstairs, you know, after everybody leaves because the parade was just ending. I said, you're going to hold one side. You're going to just – we're going to hold it up for about 60 seconds. It's going to go viral. And then when the security comes up, you just leave. I will take full responsibility. And his wife was looking at him like, I don't know about this. I don't know about this. They said, honey, I'm doing it. We're going up there. And I showed him the banner. He said, let's go. So he led me. Yeah. What does your wife have to say about all this banner dropping? Oh, yeah, I don't go there. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like my wife. Oh, it sounds like if I was doing something stupid yeah. like that, my Cuff wife, yeah. my up. wife sitting right here. Right, Jack, can he see us? He can't see us, can he? he can't see us okay, okay. but but anyways, my wife's sitting here, and I'm sure if I was, uh, I get into enough stupid stuff, and and if I start doing something like that, I'm sure she'd give me an earful every time I left the the the, the, the front door with a big banner underneath my arm. Okay, I have a, I have a question for you. Sure, Brandon, um, go ahead. Have you ever done uh, uh, for the overpasses like at night the the lights? Because yeah. one of the things that we've done is we we made the signs out of Christmas tree lights and, and plywood, and we we looked into the uh, sign ordinance. And each person holding um, because they could have a, a square foot limit, but each person had the ability to hold the limit. So that might be something that you guys could do as well. Well, you know, I a lot of people tell me about interpasses or over overpasses of highways, and I just try to stay away from them because I would never want to cause an incident that could be true. You know, somebody could get angry and just that's something. I stay away from anything that is illegal. You know, there's, there's going into Yankee Stadium is not illegal. Going into Disneyland is not illegal. It's not illegal. You know, going over the Williamsburg Bridge or I'm sorry, the Manhattan Bridge was not illegal. I and it's not even that I want to be whether it's illegal or illegal, but also make sure that nobody gets harmed whatsoever so i would highly advise putting any sign over any interstate whatsoever that said trump on it because it could get somebody really upset so now you don't think you true. don't think holding one off the side of the bridge like looking at the Bro brooklyn bridge you don't think that would cause an incident that was over the water tom no i know that yeah, but that, it's that was, that was but over it's... a mile that was over a, that was over a mile away from the brooklyn bridge and it was a big banner and it was for the people that were standing on the brooklyn bridge that they could take pictures of it i, I had photographers there and everything you if you were driving over the brooklyn bridge you could not see it oh, you could okay. not see the, man, the sign on the manhattan bridge no way okay all right that's cool i thought about that i thought about that very deep sure sure just so, make sure nobody gets hurt right you know, right it's, right it's gotta be fun it has to be fun the and, first person that gets hurt it's, a, it's it's ruined and i bet you're having fun doing this I am, I am. Especially, now, yeah. now, now, the, what, what is the response from the public when you do this? Okay, so now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back up a little bit because the response from the public that I get in New York City the most, and that's how this all started, was when I was rowing because this all started with rowing. You know, I was out there on the Hudson River one day, you know, like I think I told you already, I was rowing. I, I have to always put a flag up on my boat and because I go backwards and all the boats go forward, so I have to make sure they see me before I see them. Right. And I had to put the Trump sign up there. And after I put that Trump sign, I heard all these responses that I actually thought were going to be positive. You know, the first day that I put the flag up, I was like, well, there's 20 percent of Trump supporters in New York City, but they were all negative. And it was just, you know, I hope you die, you know, uh, get out of our river, you know, F Trump, F Trump, F Trump. I heard people from the rooftop screaming, people opening up their windows, get out of our river. You know, so now I, I do it about twice, three times a week. I go around Manhattan with my boat. With now I have two Trump flags, and you know, the, and and I do it for the response. I, I really don't do it for the liberals that don't like me, but it's to inform the conservatives and and the people in New York City that there's 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 a there's a Trump supporter out there, and to maybe join me. You know, join my cause or not. But to know that there's there's support for Donald Trump in New York City, especially when I go around the boat. You have the tour boats that go around New York City, so there's a lot of tourists taking pictures, and and it makes everything go viral. And even the, even the liberals of New York City take pictures of me, and they say, "Look what this guy is doing 
not knowing that they're advertising for Donald Trump at the same time. So it's a win, win, win. You can't, That's true. I can't lose. You right. can't lose. Now, do you think, okay, in the, in the current political climate, do you think that a lot of people that are Trump supporters are actually almost like closet Trump supporters? Yes, absolutely. So about once a week, I do a little shinding out front of Trump Tower and I, I set up my thing and whatever, and, and I have a lot of people that come over. They go into Trump Tower, they go in to buy a hat, they come out, they put the hat on, they take a picture of me, they put the hat back in the bag, and then they go on. Right. But, you know, but you see that all the time. And especially in New York, I would say that New York, even New York City, Manhattan, is 50%, 50%. Okay? So you have 20% that voted for Trump, you have 50% that did not, you know, or whatever, did not vote for Donald Trump. And then you have this 30% of people that are so afraid to say that I'm a Trump supporter, whether they're married or whether it's work or whether it's just being social. And, and to me, it's, it's, it's probably the biggest problem of them all, that there are so many people that are afraid to come out for Donald Trump. Hmm. You think there are that many? Absolutely. At least 30 percent. Hey. Somewhere between 25 and 30 percent of went- New York City. Yeah, he went. That, is, that he, is in the closet. That is in the closet. Absolutely. I can tell you one thing because it's really in vogue. It's really popular to be a Trump hater right now across the board, and you don't hear hardly anybody except Dion here and a few others coming out and publicly displaying their uh, basically you know support of Donald Trump. But the reality is, is that he would have never gotten elected in this country if there wasn't a whole lot of people that support Donald right. Trump. But that's when I got back to my, you know, my my choice of words earlier, where I say in this political climate where the left has been so critical and 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 just just downright vicious towards any Trump supporter that a lot of people are just like, well, OK, well, we're just going to sit back here. We're not going to say anything. But you know what? He'll probably get elected again. Yeah, but you really yeah, believe the popular vote picks that? Well, and that's why we're a Republican, not a democracy. I believe that we have the Electoral College for a reason, and we should protect that. Benjamin Franklin said that he gave us a republic if we can keep it. Republic. This country's ran on money. Well, but the, 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 the point is matter. is that is that the reason why the, the Founding Fathers established the Electoral College is because they understand the mob mentality of the general public. And so we elect the state representatives, and then the state representatives um, uh, collect and, and pool for the election for the, the uh, uh, president. And I think that that is the appropriate way of doing things, because you have states like California and New York that if we had popular vote, they would force their will on the rest of the country. So you wouldn't have equal voice in, in some of the more rural areas. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Well, I, I, think- I, have, one, I have one real quick sure. question. Uh, so who do you think would uh, be the candidate after uh, Trump in 2024? Who do you think would be the next person to, to, to step up? Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, Cory Booker. Oh, Cory Booker. Interesting. I mean, he's, he's, he's a top uh, – Spartacus. <laughs> I'd say Spartacus. <laughs> Okay, Dion. Okay, if, if the Democratic Party came to you tomorrow and wrote out a five million dollar check for you to drop a banner of whoever there, you wouldn't take it. Money's no Absolutely option. Absolutely not. You ever thought no, about? No, of course. You ever thought about doing your banner drops commercially for like a big company? Say Red Bull came up and dropped you a check to, to like drop their banner mm-hmm. off the side of a bridge. Would you do that? No, I mean I, I already. I mean I have a lot. I've already had a lot of offers, uh, and I do sell the flags. Or you know, yeah, they're not hard to find. Uh, but um, no, of course not. You know, this is, this is I'm a person of principle. Like I say, I was in the military, come from a long traditional background of people that are very, very conservative. And that's like selling yourself out, you know, so absolutely right. not. No way, no way, shape or form. So no. Now, in, in the future, because you don't know who the president, uh, who the, uh, you know, who the uh, adversary in your war for Trump is going to be in the next election. But will you ever allow any mudslinging on your banners? Or are you going to keep it straight and simple as uh-huh. Trump? Keep America great. No, 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 not not so much mudslinging, but I would be very impressed, very impressed, and I would bring bring a challenge out to anybody right now, especially with them rolling out in the river with these flags. You know, they're it, it, it gets a lot of attention. I mean, I get millions and millions of impressions. You know, average people looking at my my flags right. every every not not day, but every every week, and I would be really impressed if even one person came out with a Joe Biden, a Cory Booker, or, you know, whoever, and, and and sort of shared the same kind of compassion that I share. So, you know, I'm not really so worried about, you know, something like, you know, you know, that because it's not I just feel that the Democratic Party is all about just writing checks to get a president elected. And we actually put the in the actual effort. 
Which is, oh, the, and the last thing that I actually want to kind of talk about was the De Niro and the Frozen. Oh, yeah, know, yeah. The Frozen and, and by the so. way, by the way, I did reach out to, I believe his name is Timothy, Timothy Hughes, uh, which was the actor oh, that, yeah, I did. I reached out to him. He's the actor Thanks. that snatched it out of your hand. Uh, unfortunately, he responded, but he said that he had a play tonight and he wasn't, you know, he, he really didn't want to give this too much attention. But he did respond back, but he, he was reluctant. Well, he wasn't reluctant. He said he couldn't come on the show tonight. Because uh, he was doing his uh, Frozen play tonight. Um, but, yeah, how did, how did you feel about that? Okay, well, the De Niro one was great because it was perfect timing because he said F Trump. And the funny thing was, At the Tony I Awards. just happened to win. No, the De Niro was... thing was three days before. Yeah. So the, the, the F Trump. Yeah, so the timeline yeah. is basically that uh, Robert De Niro goes on the Tony Awards. He gets out yep. there. He says, fuck Trump and all this stuff. And so the next thing you yep. do is you go buy tickets to go see his play. Nope. No? I do not. Nope. I just happen to win tickets to the, the <laughs> because you know they have a lottery system here. Right. And I had them in my backpack. I had the Trump flags in my backpack. Uh huh. And when we were and we were at the show, I said to my wife, I said, um, "Sorry, honey, I got to do this." And she knew immediately that I was going <laughs> to run to the front because I've done it before. Well, let's it before. rewind. Let's rewind. So, so you you look over at your wife and you're all sorry, honey. I have to do this. And, and what does she, what does she look at you and what does she do? <laughs> She's like, she no. looked at me and said, please, she said, please don't. But as soon as I started pulling out of the bag, she just ran out of the theater. <laughs> Very supportive. Very supportive. I that like that. sounds like something I would do. I'm sure my wife would do the exact same thing. She's all, get me out of here. She's already called Uber as you're walking your way up there. Okay. And you guys are wise yeah, doing but, pretty but good. I have to thank, but I have to thank Robert De Niro for taking that viral, too, because he said his message was F Trump and that went viral. And he took my message, Trump 2020, and that was plastered all over the Internet, too. And I also have to thank the actor in Frozen, who I never had a chance to. He said he was he wasn't going to apologize to me, and I think that's great. I don't want him to apologize to me because I want him. I I'm thankful the fact that he pulled it out of my hands because had he not pulled it out of my hands, it wouldn't have gone viral. That's and now there's Trump absolutely correct. Frozen. Every time you put you put Trump in Frozen, you just see this this banner everywhere. So it <laughs> that's works. True. That's what that's guerrilla true. marketing, baby. Guerrilla marketing. Oh, I'm all about they the guerrilla marketing work for me. Yeah, I think I think you need to teach my crack staff how to get some banners out for this stupid show so somebody will pay attention to it. Brandon, how come you're not hanging signs off the freeway, you slacker? Yeah, we need Radio Underland ones hanging off the freeway. <laughs> we'll just have him do it. We'll just have Dion do it. <laughs> he won't do it. Yeah, if, if we pull together like 20 bucks, Dion, can you drop one of our banners? <laughs> okay. Absolutely. Of course I would. I'll put a Radio Underland uh, around around the Hudson River tomorrow if you send me a <laughs> Okay, it. all right, we're on it. <laughs> hey, wouldn't you, wouldn't you shit a brick, Brandon, if you saw his boat out there and a picture of the Trump banner and then Radio Underland would, going down the Hudson River? I, oh. I would put it as a campaign flyer, honestly. <laughs> uh, Brandon Moore's second district, San Barbara City College. <laughs> all right, well, I know we had a couple callers that wanted to come on. Uh, Jack, are, uh, do we even have that? We just moved our studio around, and so we're, Jack's still trying to figure out which plug goes where. Uh, Jack, do we have another caller on the line? Not at the moment. Of course you don't, Jack. Well, get on that. Okay. So, well, so Dion, do you think anybody has any chance to take him, take you know, take over the spot in 2020? You think it's just him? No, oh, absolutely not. No, no, no freaking yeah, way. Um, you know, it's going to be like Reagan's second win, you know, was what we were 35 states, I think, in 2016, 35. Was it 35? I think we get to pick up another five states. Do you think he'll want to do you think he'll want to run again in 2020? Do you think he'll want to run again in 2020? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, he's yeah. definitely going to run. I know people, I know, you know, I've, I'm not, I know a lot of people in the Trump organization. And Donald Trump, if he had the chance, would, would, would prefer to die in the Oval Office or in the White House. <laughs> and, not, and not just because of the power thing, because, he, you know, the future, the future of America, his children, his children's children. You know, he's got a great family. It's a, it's a lot about the family with, with Donald Trump. So, yeah, he's, he's a thousand percent running in 2020. Mm. All about oh yeah, family. I mean he's definitely going to run. I, I, you separating know, I, families. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, like I said, I, I went. Back, oh come on! <laughs> no, he he signed the order to make sure the families were together uh, at the sure. border hey, after hey. they were already separated. Yeah, but that well, was that was uh, stuff that was going on in an administration's place before him. So he he's the only one that stepped in to change it. It's always everyone else's fault. Oh okay. All right, all right, Dion. Uh, not everybody in the studio is giving the Trump love today. Well, I don't even know if I am for that matter. I'm just asking questions. I mean, Dion, for me, for me, honestly, like I said, I'm kind of a, I'm kind of from a libertarian stance. You know what I mean? And and, and I kind of look at Trump the way that I looked at, at this just this Kavanaugh hearing that just happened. You know, regarding the Kavanaugh, 
there were so many people that were 100 percent pro Kavanaugh just regarding the rape al- allegations. There's people that are 100 percent with Ford regarding the rape allegations. And I sit here in the middle and I look at it and I go, there's not a proof to tell what the hell happened with anything here. So how can you possibly be 100 percent Kavanaugh or 100 percent Ford? Uh, in my opinion, when you're looking at the evidence that's on the table, the people that are 100 percent Kavanaugh regarding the rape allegations are fools. And so are the people that are 100 percent for Ford. So I kind of find myself in the middle. I mean, I, I mean, like I said, I'm very I'm very financially conservative for our country. And I'll tell you what it looks like. I mean, the statistics are proving it, that Trump has made progress, and that is what he got elected for. I mean, I think people were sick of, uh, you know, people just pissing all over our economy and making the U.S. look like a bunch of chumps. But you know what? He's still fighting in undeclared wars, and and, and these are some of the issues that I have with him. You know, the, the fact is, is that uh, we we have troops in, in countries that, that Congress hasn't voted on. And 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 I, I do believe that that there are a lot of good things that he's doing, but I really wish that he would be able to be stronger, like like with the bump stock things. Come on, he, he was strong Second Amendment during the campaign. Now he's talking about taking away uh, our bump stocks. Brandon, you know? you're getting the full on stink eye from Jack right now. I just want you to know that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so do, uh, Jack, do you finally have a caller on the line? Yes, he th- does. Thanks for the speedy. Re- All right, caller, who am I talking to? This is Joe. Joe, Joe, is. Joe. You're on fo- on the phone with Dion Cheney. He is the master of the Trump banner. What kind of question do you have for Mr. Dion? All right. So, oh, this thing's feeding back. I don't think I have that on. Um, um, so, I just, I just have a question. You're a self described ultra conservative ultra-conservative and a constitutionalist, yet you support a guy who based his campaign on breaking constitutional amendments and is putting people into power who shit all over the Constitution. How do you justify that? Uh, Dion, could you hear him at all? I did not. Mm. Okay, so... (laughs) Brandon, what was that question? uh, Well, uh, I believe Joe is saying that... uh, the the Kavanaugh, uh, you know, he he's obviously uh, violated the Fourth Amendment, and, and he supported Obamacare and a bunch of other things that that are not constitutionalist, as well as as uh, campaigning on things like um, banning uh, Muslims, you know, from from entering, which is not very uh, pro constitutionalist. Uh, I may be misspeaking on some of these specifics, but th- those are generally some of the issues that I think uh, uh, Trump may be running into if you're calling him a constitutionalist. And and well, and so the that caller is was, exactly what I'm talking about, Brandon. And so the caller is asking: Is how can you support somebody like that that seems to like go against in some of these instances against our constitutional rights? That was the question for the caller. Yeah, that's a that's a tough question because he, he already said he already presumed that that Kavanaugh is against our our constitutional rights, even though he's wrote 323 uh, whatever whatever they're called. Opinions, you know, uh, that, that's a tough one. That's a tough one for me. You know, I, I don't really get. I, I like this. Uh, he wrote the like Patriot the Act person until they, you know, they, they pay their due. So, well, I mean, but he wrote the Patriot Act, and and he also uh, has been very public with his uh, feeling that the metadata, metadata mining is is not unconstitutional. And these were the the reasons that I was critical of Kavanaugh myself, and and think that we shouldn't have been you know worried about this shit from 1982, but more focus on on some of the things that he's done more recently. Yeah, but the problem with the the Democratic Party is they shot themselves in the foot immediately because they said they were going to do anything in their power to stop the nomination. And that was before the allegation came out. If the allegation had come out on its own without them saying that, it might have had some weight to it. But when you make that kind of statement prior to anything, and then all of a sudden the next thing you know, I'm not saying it didn't happen. Uh, that's not what I'm saying by what I'm saying, but uh, they shot themselves in the foot immediately by what they did, doing right. what they did. Yeah, yeah, and unfortunately, I, unfortunately, I think payback's going to be a bitch in that case. So you know, don't 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 wish for what you want; you'll get it. Unfortunately. Yeah. So, well, anyways, especially when it comes to Roe versus Wade, back, Donald so. Trump in his that's campaign, very tough campaign directly to against the First <laughs> Amendment, the Fourth Amendment, the Fourteenth Amendment. I Give mean, me some specifics, Joe. How do you justify that? G- give us some specifics, though, Joe. Give you some specifics? Okay, so 
He was all about, uh, what, fucking stop and frisk. That was one of his things that he was all about. Birthright citizenship, he said that that shouldn't be, you shouldn't be a citizen because you're born here. First Amendment shit that I was going off, excluding news, uh, news agencies and reporters from his press conferences, and then holding press conferences where nobody was allowed in, holding meetings that the press is supposed to be at where nobody was allowed in. The First Amendment covers freedom of the press. It's not about if you fucking, if you like them or not, or you think they're fucking credible, because that's your Let opinion me. of somebody. As a president, you should have more wits about you to go, all right, so we're gonna get everybody together here. They're gonna write what they're gonna fucking write. I'm gonna say what I'm gonna say. Le, le, it is le, what it is. Let me pass Everybody on the question. Needs to get their fucking opinion out there. So, so the the question um, uh, for you, Dion, is is what are your thoughts whenever Pre- uh, President Trump speaks out in support of stop and frisk? Uh, he 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 condemns uh, birthright citizenship, and and he excludes members of the media from his press conferences. W- what are your oh. thoughts on those specific uh, uh, issues that that were addressed during the campaign? Yeah, but those are three really tough questions. I mean, the first one. Yeah, what was the first question? Sorry, what was the first question? The, the, the first one um, was stop and frisk. Uh, yeah, stop and frisk. Uh, right. No, um, not a big, not a big fan of stop and frisk. So not a, not a huge fan. It worked in New York City for about ten years, I think. Um, so no, um, I'm against stop and frisk. And he was uh, banning uh, uh, members of the press um, from his uh, press conferences? Absolutely. Absolutely. Sure, absolutely. You know, the, the, the freedom of the press doesn't mean that you have the right to just go and do whatever you want to do whenever you want to do it. You know, that's kind of the thing that you saw in Portland today. You know, how they're just saying, oh, we're going to redirect cars because that's our First Amendment right. So the, you know, the freedom of the, even the freedom of the press isn't just unlimited. And there have been many presidents that said, no, no, no White House, no. So no, absolutely not. You know, the freedom of the press is limited. Is there a third question? Yeah, he's, he's pulling it up. Yeah, the, the last question was uh, about birthright citizenship. The fact that uh, President Trump uh, has publicly said that, you know, just because you're born here does not make you a citizen here. Yeah, that's a, that's a tough one. That's a, that's a tough one. I don't even you know I don't even know how to answer that one. Uh, I guess that I went down one point from my ninety nine percent to ninety eight percent, maybe to ninety seven point five percent by the end of the night. <laughs> well, but, you know, uh, it, you know when he, I think what he's saying birthright though. I think he, is he talking about anchor babies in that in that particular sense? Or uh, th- that was or, that was probably the context in 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 which he was yeah. uh, talking. But I mean the fourth the Fourteenth Amendment is fairly clear that if you're born. In America, that you have the rights uh, of anyone else here, and and you know right. that was obviously, sure. and, and I think that reverts back to where I was stating earlier that it's hard in any climate with any president to right. say that you're one hundred percent. You know, right. there's yeah. things that happen that you don't agree with, but I think Dion is is definitely stating uh, openly, publicly that the majority of what Trump is doing, he agrees with and he supports, and maybe it does come down to some of those other issues. But you know, it's like the thing for 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 Dion. What was his other option in the last election? Gary Johnson. Uh, Ron Paul actually got an electoral vote. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, realistically, did either one of those two have a chance of even coming close to winning? And Honestly, I know that everybody no. says that. Well, if more people would vote libertarian, you got to vote your 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 you got to vote your you vote your consciousness. But the consciousness isn't winning the election. So what are you going to do? Sit back and let somebody like Hillary Clinton win? Oh well, no, not at all. Absolutely, Absolutely not. not. Sorry. The biggest chance for somebody to win the president other than Donald Trump was Bernie Sanders. And I'm not a big Bernie Sanders fan, but had the Democrats allowed Bernie Sanders to run, he would have won in a landslide. He would have won I Wisconsin, believe he, he would have won Florida, he would have won Pennsylvania, absolutely. Yeah, I believe if Bernie Sanders was the nominee against uh, Trump, I believe Bernie would have won. Well, there yeah. was way so too there much, there, there was there way too much there going was, there on. Was the, there was the, the win that never happened. Yeah. All right, Dion, is there anything else? I mean, do you have a website where people can buy these banners? I'm sure you, you – what, what do you got? Go ahead and plug your stuff. Sure, sure. It's Trump2020swag.com. And uh, have and you – pretty much – sorry. Have you been the one supplying Kanye West with his hats lately? I do not, although <laughs> I, I noticed that he, he wasn't wearing an official Donald Trump hat on Saturday Night Live. He was definitely wearing some Chinese-made hat. Oh, no, that's not American now, is it? 
Yeah, you, you okay, you need to get in touch with Kanye and you need to get him out there dropping one of these banners. I bet you he would do it with you. Absolutely. I'm or, sure or, let you, or let you do that. Guy. Or let you do that at one of his concerts. I think either one of those I think either one of those are a major possibility. And then we'll get Dion and Kanye on here, you know. We'll, we'll talk to them both. All right, Dion. Well, good luck. I hope uh, you know. Uh, I actually, when Dion tells me these stories, and I know how the climate is in our society right now, I keep on thinking that some guy is going to come up to Dion and and like physically threaten him. Have you ever been physically threatened? Yeah, sure, many times. I was going to say, there's no way. I was going to say, man, it's going to happen many, many times. You it's going to happen. Have, yeah. He's also had, a marine, I've, though. I've, 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 Several times, sure, of course. He's he's also a marine. All right, so it's it's Trump twenty twenty swag dot com. And this is Dion Cheney, the Mr. Banner. What, what's your nickname? You you need a Trump superhero name. I mean, what, what do you go by? The Flag Man, the Banner no, Man? I, I really don't. I really don't. You know, I, I try not to dilute what I'm doing whatsoever. You know, it is okay. Trump 2020, keep America great. I'm not actually, you know, like I said, I've been approached by every single mate. Ever since my first CNN interview, what I did when I was back when I was rowing, I never did an, another interview since then. This is the first one I've actually done. Thank you, sir. You know, it's, uh, you know, I do not want to dilute what I'm doing. I don't want people to just sort of copycat me and do it in a way that that's harmful. You know, I just want to keep on focus. Trump 2020, keep America great. And that is it. All right. Because if, 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 he, if Trump wins, I win. We all win. Okay, all right, D- Dion Cheney, Mr. Uh, 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 Trump 2020 Swag dot com. If you want to, yeah. you know, get on Dion's bandwagon and start dropping some banners at Six Flags Magic Mountain Knott's Berry Farm, I'm not even going to say the other one's name just for legal Disneyland, reasons. Disneyland, Disneyland. Right, right, well, you know, I'll, 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 you I'll, can I'll, say it. No, we I'll, just I'll tell you what, Dion. The, see, 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 the thing you don't know about us is we are in a current uh, current lawsuit where we're co-defendants with, uh, you know, and, and basically it's over freedom of speech, and we've been getting sued over freedom of speech. So I don't care who yeah. it is that 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 is what they're pushing, but I believe strongly in freedom of speech. Uh, and you know, like I said, we're getting sued over it right now. So I <laughs> believe me, I am a proponent of freedom of speech and tort reform. And tort reform, that's that's for sure. All right, Mr. Dion Cheney, ex Marine, Trump twenty twenty swag dot com. You have a good one, buddy, and we'll talk to you later, man. Thank you, brother. You too. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Appreciate it. Sure thing. Bye bye. You guys are great. Bye. All right. Okay. Well. Well. Well, Tom. <laughs> You know, I, I think I think what I've recognized here is the viral potential of dropping banners and how come and we need to get on it. And how come Jack's not out dropping banners for our show? That's what I'm saying. I'm busy trying to keep this whole over here afloat, man. <laughs> yeah, I bet you are. What was can I ask a question? What was all this? I don't know. He gives me all this sign language he's when they're in the middle of doing the show, here. and I have no idea what he's talking about. You know what he looks like? <laughs> I'll tell you what he looks like. Oh, I got like a, a video for it. No, no. He looks like that chick that uh, that snuck into uh, uh, and acted like the sign language uh, person ah. at, that, at that police thing. <laughs> Hold on. I've got it right here. That's kind of I, messed up, man. I can't Hold on, no, believe this... people, people are even still doing that fake sign language shit. No, no, no. no. I was it, trying it, to signal for you because like, we had we had Joe on the phone. I know what you mean. Yeah, uh, how come he couldn't hear Joe on the phone? That was a big clusterfuck of a failure. That makes zero sense to me because Joe's audio was coming from the Black Magic, so was... I know. Yeah. I, that's why I don't know why he couldn't hear it. That I, makes zero just sense. Blame I mean, he Jack should, he should Joe. be able to hear yep. Joe the Jack's same way fault. that he heard us. Yeah. And so I, maybe maybe he was just saying that he couldn't hear it because he didn't want to answer it. But hold on. Yeah, so this is what we're dealing with. Jack, put up my computer real quick because this is what I was dealing with during that whole interview. And again, another sign language interpreter accused of signing total gibberish. This time, it was at the police news conference announcing an arrest in the Tampa serial killings. We will be charging what the four f- counts of first-degree murder. Standing off to the side, apparently translating every word, this woman. We received over 5,000 tips in this case. But it turns out, much of what she was signing was nonsense. She waved her arms around like she was singing Jingle Bells, says one outraged sign language expert. The woman, identified as Derlin Roberts, has a string of arrests for fraud. So how did she come to be translating at last week's high-profile police news conference? I just didn't ask enough questions. Yeah, Tampa no shit. Police Public Information Officer Steve Hegarty okay, told me kill it. the woman simply showed up out of the blue... And- People are willing to do anything these days. She showed up out of the blue? That was the same thing that I just... (laughs) You cut it 
it off and she showed up out of the blue. I, I'm going to start doing that at Broadway shows and concerts and say, yeah, I'm your sign language interpreter for the night. Let me in. Oh, well, cool. But let me ask you something. I mean, I, I presume that they get paid. Is That would be the point, so they get paid? Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll, I'll sneak into the concert, paid, right? say I'm the sign language interpreter, and then ask for my check on the way out. <laughs> yeah, it's some of the, $500. What dude, do you mean? This some is of those negotiable. We had a to... contract. <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, people are willing to con anything, yeah, Tom. The ones that go to concerts are great, though. That's like entertainment in itself. The chick that does like Snoop Dogg concerts and yeah. like all these rap concerts. Have yeah, you like seen the, her? Like the hard rock concerts. Or even the and, hard rock, yeah. like... And they yeah. get it, and they get into it. It's actually pretty entertaining. They should have to like watch. a heavy metal one. I'd like to see they that do. one. They do. Okay, yeah. since we need to get these callers out of the way, because we have one more. Brandon, Brandon, I found somebody, and I got to watch how I word this, but I have found somebody that is more unique and special than you. Awesome. Because Brandon, we all know, identifies as trans black. Trans black. Yes, sir. Okay. And, and, he's a, and he's a special kind of special. <laughs> you know, and I, I saw this on Vice Network or something a while ago about this kid from uh, uh, New Orleans, and uh, his name is Adam Wheeler. Right. That's formerly, his name. He's like Prince, the artist formerly known as Adam Wheeler. In fact, uh, maybe we, should, we could play a, a couple seconds of the Tuck Carlson, so just so you guys can get a uh, an idea of who he is. Hang on a second. Let me and, find and, it. And I just want to, for the record, he recently or she recently changed their name to Daju. As opposed to Daju. 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 Sounds like a sandwich that I dip my beef beef in. Daju but not in a sexual way. Dajus. I thought it was Daju. Ja- ja- it, it was. It I was. It was ja- I got a message before the show, sir. I'm just passing the information along. All right. Okay. So, Brandon or, or Jack, one more time, uh, put up my computer and let's see a little bit of who Jadu is from the Tucker, Tucker Carlson show. No, Male no, named Adam Wheeler. Jadu now identifies as a Filipina woman and joins us tonight. Jadu, thanks for coming on. Oh, uh, thanks for having me, Tuck. So um, I'm not here to mock you, but just to ask you sincere questions <laughs> among them. It's what, awesome. are your, what does your mom think of this? Uh... Well, uh, you know, she she did she did eventually find find out with you know all all the stories going on about me and about and about my group. Uh, yeah, you know, she's kind of still trying to uh, trying to come to the realization that I'm not that I'm not exactly joking. That yeah. you're not joking that you you went from being a white man to a Filipina woman. Um, well, I mean. Well, how? Well, well how, she, she are, sorry. I'm sorry for. Uh, what, so, what did she say? Did she accept that? Well, she she saw one of the stories that went on about went on about me, and uh, you know, she came she came in the door, you know, like hyster- hysterically laughing, and I didn't know what was going on. I I came to, I came downstairs, and she's holding a phone with uh, with a video that was made about me on YouTube. And she was just, you know, she was just cackling, saying, "This is the best. This is the best thing ever." And you know, I, 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 I can reflect on myself in the third person, and I can see why it's silly. And it, okay, Tom. So, so basically, that gets to the nuts and bolts, or the lack of nuts and shaft, uh, whatever that's going on in this story. Um, so, Adam Wheeler from New Orleans, New Orleans, has basically uh, identified as being transracial. Trans, well, what do you call it when it's trans? There's a lot of trans going on here. Yeah, it's trans, because it's more than just transracial. It's a transracial transsexual, right? Transgender. 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 I don't know if there's a specific name for that or not. Okay, I, I think this is a new classification. <laughs> so, Jack, do we have uh, Mr. or Mrs. No, we don't. Jack's still working on it. Of course he's still working on it. Yeah, okay. So it's a Caucasian male that identifies as a Filipino woman. A Filipino woman, yes, yes. Okay. I mean, but but the, I mean, he can't be the only one out there. I mean, I thought I thought Brandon was the only one out there that was associated as trans black. But then I found out that there's whole transracial support groups on Facebook. Right. Are you a member of any of those support groups, uh, Brandon? Uh, I was unaware until you pointed it out to me. I think that's so. Now awesome. he will be. Sure. He's going to be leading the charge now. I could see that happening. Yep. Rah rah. Yeah, so 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 uh, trans racial trans gender gender yes, but you know it's now really... if, now if, now hold on because if Jadu is a trans racial transgender Filipino female that's a lesbian, I'm gonna be totally fucked on this because I don't even I need a flowchart for it. I need somebody to coin a term for that. 
the whole transgender, transracial Well, I mean, because this is the first case of transracial transgender that I've heard. So what's it going to be called? We came up with it. Well, he came up with it. What what, what are the different ones? Gender fluid is when you don't. That's when you don't identify as anything, right? You can't ask me right. any of those questions. Yeah, tra- uh, gender fluid. fluid is where you may change your identity from day to day or even... Depending on how you feel. It depends yes. on what... And you don't identify as a male or a woman regardless of the body That works in. awesome if you're on the run from the cops. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, you know, but there, there have been Sorry, stories I'm not of, black today. of Sorry. Uh, transgender individuals <laughs> today that I were... I am white. <laughs> I saw that there was this black dude that got pulled over and he said, uh, I'm, I'm a white. I identify as a white college age female or something like that. <laughs> oh man, That's, there wasn't I just something read something not too long ago about a guy who was transgender who was in. Hey. I can hear you. He was in trans. He's a transgender. He was in prison, so they put him in the woman's side of the prison, and then he afterwards apparently did some inappropriate things with the women in that prison. Yeah, I saw that. That 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 the trans. Gender male that was locked up with the females was accused of raping the females in the female prison, and it's like if you're if you're the prison, you know, the warden, and you're trying to go by everything that everybody's setting up, and it's like, well, he identifies as a female, so I got to put him over here with the females, and then he she starts raping the females. It's like shim. It's like what the fuck do you do, man? It's when does shim. it end? Put him in a cell by himself. It's really all you can do. You guys are like a bowl in a china shop right now. Well, they're trying to get our next caller on the line. Jadu. Jadu. I just like Adam Wheeler from New no, Orleans. It's not Jadu anymore. Now it's Daju. 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 Daju? Yes. I thought it was Jadu. No, that just changed 10 seconds ago. That's how fluid. Shin, Hold on. Say, say that again, is. Brandon. I, 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 got a show, I got a message just before the show that says that, that she is changing uh, her, uh, her name as Daju. Daju. Okay, wait a minute. So. But originally it was Jadu. Jadu is now Daju. J A D U was not even originally. Originally it was Adam Wheeler. Yes. Correct. And then it became Jadu. J A D U. Yes. And now we fluidity changed again to its Jadu. Daju. 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 Yeah, I'm fucking. It's so close that it's like a tongue twister. I'm lost. All right, Adam, just get on the fucking phone because I want to see if you're going to change your sexual identity by the time by the end of this interview. Um, but I have some serious questions for him. I really do. I really do. I know I joked around with him on the phone earlier, and I, you know, I, I was just trying to get her to relax. Her, right? right. Her to relax. Yeah. Well, and what? What, Stefan? Is it her? It's her. It's Daju. Okay. Daju. You, you could always play the the videos from whenever I was in the Philippines. While we wait, I don't have any videos of you. We from don't the care Philippines. about your. Stop trying to promote your Filipino trip. <laughs> Your trip to the Philippines. How high are you right now? I Nobody. think I'm now pretty he's high trying to be the Goodfellas. Now you know, I you check think he's on weed maps. Good they got some really good weeds. Yeah. Really? Why are you plugging shit that doesn't sponsor us? Oh, I mean, because they have some really good weed. Anytime I need moon rocks, I just send them a message. I hit them up through weed maps. Okay. And, and, and when good. they start sponsoring the show or some, they kind of did form. actually. Oh. Well, I, I mean, yeah. I think. <laughs> I think that. Um, the plane. Duh. Man, I don't I've never think heard I've ever heard a plane fly over like the studio that loud never. before. It sounds like it's going to land on the roof. <laughs> so, don't say so that. good fellas are the guys that hooked you up, Brandon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they're also uh, under Red Rum. Uh, if you are you actually like running a gorilla style commercial for them right uh, now? I, I, it sounds like I it. just think that it's it's great. It's a great place for you to go. They're very friendly. You know, they're very prompt. They they uh, deliver. This show is know. not a fucking Yelp review of your drug dealer, Brandon. Well, but wait, I, I I I'd like to partake. So I mean, maybe there's a number I can call and get. Oh them yes, in. I, I absolutely drop something off at my house if at all possible. Yeah, I mean, you could always check it out on on Weed Maps. They have the information there. But you know, hey, you could always go. to... I'm like Joe Rogan, this bitch. I'm trying to get. Elon Musk to fucking smoke with me. You know I'm what I'm just saying. saying. And they actually gave me a, a disclaimer for the, the moon rocks that I got today. They gave I you a disclaimer e- for the moon rocks. Did you hear the thing about Elon Musk that he gave a bunch of money and like filters and shit to? Yeah, uh, to Flint, Michigan. Detroit, yeah, to all Flint, the Michigan. schools. Stepping up, doing what the government can't do. Apparently. Water That's filtration systems for all the schools. Giving the citizens of the United States water. Brandon, what are you doing over there? Just because potheads are awesome. Yeah, I guess. I guess so. we care. Did you I guys? So. Did you any of you guys watch the? I still think fight? something's fishy with Brandon over there dropping the Goodfellas dispensary name like twenty times on our show. Brandon has assured me there's nothing odd going on. Nothing odd. It's all even. 
Did you get anything free out of your trip to uh, Goodfellas today? Today, no. Have you ever got anything free from your trip to Goodfellas? Technically, I don't take a trip to Goodfellas because they're a delivery service and they come to okay. my Okay, all right, all right. Have they ever delivered you something free? I think that they have great deals, and I I, I, I can't say if there was. You know, always avoiding this well, a question, no, right? Because it's, it's not really free. You know, it's like one of those things. If you you know you buy a hundred bucks worth, maybe they have give you, you ever you you get, you have you ever negotiated them. with Goodfellas that you would drop their name on our show in exchange for some mar- med- medical marijuana? I think we have a caller on the line. No, 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 no. Caller can wait. Caller can wait. Have you ever negotiated with Goodfellas that in exchange for product that you would mention their name on our show? I, I did uh, suggest yes. the fact that we could have a segment called uh, Two Guys in a Blunt, and they, they said that they may be willing to sponsor a blunt if we did that segment. Sweet. Have you received anything free? Sold. From the Sold. good. Okay, have you received anything from Goodfellas in exchange for you dropping the Goodfellas dispensary name on our show? Not yet. That's all we were Do you asking. have plans to do it after dropping their name on our show like 20 times tonight? to receive something in exchange for dropping their name on our show. Yes. If they did, that would be awesome. <laughs> Only if they call oh what gosh. number? What was the number? Are you in on this? Of course he is. He's trying well, to get him to plug the number. Of course just, he's I, on, I, in I, on it. I, I enjoy. I think you guys need to stand with our banner over a freeway pass. Apparently, Tom, we're the only ones that are doing this show for free because all of the help in the house, not stuff. Don't tell oh, shit. That was the wrong <laughs> thing to say. <laughs> the help. You see, you see, you see, you see, it just got real. Damn. It just got and real. I, I didn't mean it. And I didn't mean it like that. Missy? And I just Get want to point out, out when he said the help, the hand didn't go this way. Yeah. <laughs> the hand it's directly went. towards me, right? <laughs> yeah. And I'm supposed to be miss- oh, shit. missing. Yeah, yeah, you see, you rubbed off on him. I oh. haven't said you, anything did, bad. Did you, did you guys Not see today. the fight? Did you guys see any of the fights on Saturday? <laughs> UFC with McGregor. I, no. I saw the end of it. I saw the explosion at the end of it. But did, no, there was something way better prior to the uh, McGregor fight when the the uh, oh I, the guy who had hot balls. Yeah, hot balls. Oh, cool. I, I did. I did I see think the interview. Name, I didn't I think, pull it up, I, but I, I did see I it. I know what. I can't remember. I think it's Brooke Davis or something Davis. I'm not even mad. I'm and, not even surprised it was a brother. So he was fighting another Russian guy. Just happened to be, and he knocked him out. He was losing the fight and, and just happened to catch him and knocked him out. One of the it. best post-fight interviews I've ever seen. <laughs> Takes his shorts off, tells Joe Rogan his balls were hot. But then when he said, you know, he asked him about the fight, he said, he said that Donald Trump called him and told him to, to knock that Russian motherfucker oh, out. Oh, I saw because the of the clip. way he goes. <laughs> I saw a little. He clip. goes because of the way Putin's been treating him on the news. <laughs> and he just remembered it he, at the end of the fight. Yeah. And then he asked to go on Joe Rogan's show and smoke weed with him. Yeah, yeah didn't he say like USA ho or some shit like yeah. that? Oh, it was one it's one of the best post fight interviews ever. Fucking funny. I have to change my notes for the next interview because our, our, our interviewee just changed his name on us. Uh Jack, do we have him on the phone yet? Yes. Oh we do. I, okay, hold on. Let why did you shake up. your head? What no. is this phone number across oh, the it, screen? It, it's uh, Goodfellas. It's nine five one four 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 zero one seven six. Are you seeing the shit right really? now? Do you see the shit? Wait a minute. Da- There's a look at get on- that shit off my screen. <laughs> what is that bullshit? <laughs> He's got Goodfellas weed shop numbers up on our screen right now. What, I- now that I know who the call, thanks, Jack. I appreciate that. Because Brandon couldn't get this it out This is of- fucked up on so many levels. Oh so wait a minute. So they're going to promote this shit, get free yeah, shit, yeah. and we're going to get nothing. 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 You had new chairs. Wow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, he's got oh a point. God. All right. Uh, Dodge you. The yeah. Jew. It sounds like right. somebody that a German wants to put in a gas chamber. It is the Dodge Jew. Jew, right? All right. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, you didn't look at the picture I sent you along with that. Wow. You, you sent a picture too? Well, yeah, I sent the picture. Oh, okay. oh God. Yeah, scroll up and look at the picture. Is it- what was he talking about? Scroll. Okay, all right. The Jew. The, I can't say the Jew now. Dajou. Like Aju. Like Aju. Like Aju. Like now when I say it, I just think is, of Todd Von D. I, I used one of these stupid meme filters and I gave myself like a is Israeli-esque nose and like put a bunch of shekel emojis all over the screen and was like, oh, now you can call me da- the Jew. Okay, so now you're like a, a... Brandon, help me. I need a flow chart because now he's <laughs> a Jewish 
Filipino Whoever Whoever I sent a female. message on Facebook, just scroll up. You'll laugh. It's good. Okay, I don't want to make hey. light of this. I want to talk about this seriously, but I have to ask first. If you were a female Filipino Jew, are you lesbian too? <laughs> Because if you're a lesbian, uh, I don't even know what I, I don't even know what the fuck we're doing here. It kind of it kind of recircles you all the way back to I square haven't, one. I haven't slept in many eons, and uh, yeah, well, uh, it's 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 funny you mentioned sexuality. I'm actually asexual. Okay, can you explain okay, can that you, to me? Yeah. Because I'm old school. I'm a, I, uh, I come oh, from asexuality. Yeah, I think it's pretty dumb. Uh, <laughs> hold on, because I come from the old school where dick either either went into a vagina or a butthole, and that was the end of the story. You know, oh. it's it's, it's well, and, think... and, and, and let me let me tell you, did you, Daju? you, Daj you. I, to me, we're rolling with that, Nelly. Yeah, well, well, I guess so. I mean, I'm kind of out of options, but I'll tell you what. In my opinion, sexuality should be classified as forget what you want to dress as, forget whatever you want to do. Sexuality should just be classified as what you want to stick it in or receive. So for you, you're into dudes, well, right? Asexual, I, I Wait, believe, oh, no, is no, like no, 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 uh, no sex. Well, in in what manner do you mean, like? Like, okay, okay, okay. I, I totally okay. agree with you, by the way. The P I totally the P. agree with you, by the way. Okay, hold on. Let's, like, let's take, let's wait, take wait. your Jewish Filipino mess. Let me communicate. This is getting complicated, wait. and I'm going to need a whiteboard. Okay, yeah. Let, let, me, let me explain to myself, Hoyo. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's take the All Filipino, right. let's take the Filipino female Jewish out of it. Take the Pino out of the woman. I did okay, not consent. No, hold, hold on. No, okay, okay. I don't want to Kavanaugh your ass on this. I just want to, like, for a second, suspend all that. And what do you want to see in the bedroom? A hairy butthole or a dick? Or, or both? Or a vagina? Uh, well, I, I keep telling you, I'm, I'm, ace, I'm asexual. I don't like, know what that means! Romance, romant, romantic, like, romantically, I'd say, eh, maybe ladies. Uh, but I, so you're, I just so you're a want Filipino. to go any further than uh, than platonic relationships. Okay, so so I need to I need to mentally prepare myself for this interview. So you're a Filipino female that's a lesbian. Nope. No. He uh, said he likes ladies. Uh, I'm, I'm the, she said. Well, she this, she this said. Funny thing. Fuck him. It's, it's, it's like the the media the media kind of like takes things like my my original interview with like Garen Flowers was like a two hour long interview, but they took like the most sensationalist stuff out of it. So when I'm trying to talk about like the the seriousness of like dysphoria and stuff, they 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 just put up. Yeah, boy, uh, I'm a I'm I I'm totally a Filipino and a lady. That's it. We're uh, live though. We're live. <laughs> we're live. I can't edit any, any yeah, of this out yeah, there. Yeah, we are so. live right okay, now. So we're live. Yeah, that's that's why I love doing live stuff. <laughs> okay. I just, I, 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 I want to uh, go well, back. Thanks for good memes. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, we got to go uh, back about forty five. All right, seconds. Let, let's 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 rewind this back to where you were. <laughs> No, Let, let's just let's just oh start from the. I want to know how we got to where we are today, okay? So let's well, rewind this. Uh, let's rewind this back. How old are you, and where were you born? Were you born in the Philippines, or or New York, or New Orleans? Where were you born? I'm, what the fuck is I'm that? I'm 24 years old, and I was born in California. <laughs> what the hell did I just look over yeah. and see right now? I don't know, man. I'm so, I'm so hold on, sorry. hold on. I, I'm you so, guys I'm called sorry. me on. Dude. I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Missy's totally screwed with our show. What is happening right now? I'm just, I'm just out on two nights of no sleep and my dictator. Can you just out. turn your cup holder? Okay. So. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Turn. Turn it over. Miss, can you be quiet? No, we're not showing that. It's oh. it's the most weirdest sexual thing I've ever seen I in my life. I wish I didn't see it. It's because I said, well, are you into the P it? and the V? Are you into P and the P? And I meant to say P and the B. And so someone sent me a photo of P and the P. Oh, <laughs> so wait. So wait. So you weren't wrong. All right. You all right. were absolutely right oh then, God, apparently. See, all right, Dodge. Dodge. How my last interview all right. went. Back all right, Dodge. No, I, I've got something <laughs> to educate you Dubai. with. I've got something oh to educate. God, I've got something to educate you with. It is possible to have sex with a P and a P, uh, but uh, there has to be a force. Oh, yeah. Have you heard of docking? Well, that's what it looked oh, like to me. Oh, there was a foreskin involved. That's, that's so. a term for that. That's a perfect That's, that's a what perfect it was. That's what it is. Docking. Docking. Yeah, docking. see, look, we're, someone, we're, I can't even, like, it's right no, there. No, it, look, it looked like that movie, What? That, it looked like Human Centipede <laughs> if it starred only dicks. That's what it looked like. It started with uh, awkward stares and, uh, like... 
smallpox. I almost like, look like uh, somebody's small hey, intestines. Like All right. I don't know, just standing here like you. All right, Serenity now. Let's let's take this seriously. Okay. Usa. Okay. Usa. <laughs> Usa. All right. So you were born and you said California? Yeah. Okay, you're born in California. And your birth certificate says that your birth name is Adam Troy Wheeler. Adam Troy Wheeler. Okay. And the sex on your birth certificate said It said male. Male. I, I don't know yeah. why that's funny. I mean, okay, let's just, let's just go with it. And your ethnicity listed on your birth certificate stated that you were white. White. Okay, so you Actually, were born. Do they, do they put uh, do they put race on your birth certificate? Yes, they do. Yes, they do. They yes, do. they do. Uh, yeah, I haven't looked at it since. Uh, well, I think I yours know, needs. Man, I think but... yours needs a heavy duty revision. I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You wouldn't right. be wrong. Okay, so so you were born a white male in California. And then all of a sudden, all the something changed. When did stuff start changing uh, for you? Like, like, and, and it's just so interesting for me to 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 see you, uh, you know, associate as a Filipino. I mean, did did you start displaying traits or something? Did you start, you know, taking your shoes off before you entered every room? With you know, a sudden urge to do manicures or pedicures uh, on strangers' feet? I or, mean, what did or, you start? Uh, what did you start associating with that made you think you're Filipino? And massage parlors at rock bottom prices. No, <laughs> no, but let's let's be real. Let's be real. When, when did you start yeah, to yeah. notice that you wanted to be something different, or you were something different? Well, uh, it's it's funny. My my association with uh, with Filipino culture and uh, an affinity for it uh, really came much later. But from Pokemon I, I, or <laughs> one of those anime cartoon yes. shit. Adam Wheeler is evolving. Oh, he's <laughs> evolved into trash. Okay, okay, so you started developing a <laughs> fandom or affinity for Filipino culture. What was it much, about that? Later, but what I'm trying to say is, is I kind of came to the understanding of transracial identity much, much earlier in my life during my childhood. And 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 and, and how did you even hear about transracial identity? Uh, well, this is the, well, I, I never heard about it or knew what it was, and. Like I, I grew up in a very poor apartment complex and, you know, some of my earliest memories are of, you know, white, like thugging white kids who were like listening to rap music Brandon. and, you know, their, their parents kind of disapproved of the crowd that they hung around and I'm a they were curious. often subjected to abuse to make it stop. Daju, and I, what city yeah. was this located in uh, out of my curiosity? Oh, uh, Dallas. Dallas? I mean, oh, Dallas, oh, no, uh, he was born in California, but then he moved later to Dallas, uh, I'm assuming. Yeah, I, I, I have no memories of California. Okay, so you're talking about Dallas, I Texas. I grew up in Texas. Which is very accepting of trans-Filipino lesbians. Well, not, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. I, I have no clue. So go ahead, go ahead. I don't keep, have keep, keep many friends, so... Okay, so so you're you're living in Dallas. You're seeing all the white kids being kind of thuggish, like Brandon listening to hip hop and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And and Brandon, and, you know, so you know that we have a transracial person on our show. It's Brandon, our executive producer. He he identifies oh, as yeah, black. Of course, we talked all about that. Yeah, I bet you guys have a lot in common. I, I'm not. Oh afraid. yeah, man. they're going to be doing some our, docking our later. Friendship is hopefully bonding. I hope it. Uh, you know. Apart. Okay. More than bonding, I hope this what shit about, gets what consummated. What if it uh, turns into something else? You know what I mean? You know, yeah. docking, like docking. docking. There's gonna be yeah. some docking later. So I hope one of you guys, oh, yeah, is, one of you guys, no have a foreskin. That, <laughs> okay, all right. No, I, I don't. So, so you here? You are in Dallas, and you're seeing these white kids act like black kids, I, I, basically, and that, and that was kind of your introduction into the whole transracial. Yeah, and I, I had my early, uh, my early adulthood to kind of think back on this and. Uh, you know, by this point in time, I had developed strong feelings towards the Filipino culture, and I kind of looked up things to see that there was other people who had this form of dysphoria. And, uh, you know, from there, I created one of the second highest uh, liked Facebook support groups for those kinds of people. And uh, and is there a lot of people out there that you have found through Facebook uh, that have the same feelings oh, as you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. A lot. I'm not alone. And, it's it's almost something that I wish I I didn't do, not because I I didn't want to offer that level of you know support and 
for for those people but sometimes the stories i get are really rough <laughs> oh i i like, I, I bet I, 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 we're pretty rough yeah. on Brandon every week about his trans blackness. So I, I, you know, and and we love the guy. So, I mean, but it's not like you're walking around with a bumper sticker on your ass that says, "Hey, I'm a Filipino female." So oh, I mean, no. I, I mean, how do people oh, even no. know? Well, the the, th- the thing is, no one knows, and it kind of goes hand in hand with my tr- with transsexuality because uh, I don't look the part. I don't look like a woman. I don't look like a Filipino. So. I don't walk up to everyone and say, "Hey, you better call me by my preferred pro uh, whatever uh words." Well, you know, I, th- I think I think that I think the deal breaker is me something I want it to be natural and non-compelled. Okay, but but to be straight, you do sit down when you pee, right? Oh, yeah, dude. Okay, making sure. Yeah, but you, sure do, you're do you do dre- do you dress like a woman at all? No. No, I haven't, but that's that's kind of one of the things that has been like, you know, bothering me, especially about my gender dysphoria, which you know is outweighs outweighs uh, you know trans ethnicity. Wait a minute, does it bother you because you don't feel like you want to, but you don't feel like you can? Yeah, uh, and and you know, I actually go and go and get my HRT on the 18th, so um, it's been something I've been looking forward to for like. Like all my life. What, 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 what is that? Yeah. I'm sorry. What is that? Hormone, uh, repla- oh, hor- hormone, hormone replacement, replacement therapy. therapy. Okay. So okay. I, so I'm, that will begin the change then. Yeah. Well, uh, I I don't know how I feel about how I feel about transitioning into Filipino identity um, because while you know tra- transgenders mostly mostly phys- Mostly physical aspects about yourself are the ones you want to change so you feel like you're in your own skin. Uh, but, you know, I feel like ethnicity comes more from within than from out. Thank you. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. Oh, of that. course it makes sense to you, Brandon. Yeah, Absolutely. absolutely. Because if he gets pulled over by a fucking cop, I, I, <laughs> no matter what you feel like on the inside no, or no, the no, outside, no. they're going to be like, sir... Please just go Absolutely. home. No, but but you know what? Like 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 how I talk to y'all is how I would you know how I interact, and so it's like like it's the way that, Wait, that I feel who, comfortable. Who's the who's the guy to the far left in the in the red square shirt? Stefan. 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 Yes. Would would you give Brandon uh, the uh, the I'm gonna I'm gonna say this in a way that's safe for the air? Have you given Brandon a ninja pass? <laughs> Dude, th- th- yeah, th- Brandon, th- Brandon kind of took his own fucking ninja pass. I never gave it away officially. He already had it when we met him. Yeah, he. he Look, uh, you he, need to be accepting of Brandon. Accepting. You need to give him his ninja pass. <laughs> is that what he needs? Is nin- see, problem is, is I might give him a ninja pass, but when he hits the block, right, the pass might not be the same. <laughs> Yeah, as the Brand- one that I Brandon's him. ninja pass and Brandon will become expired. <laughs> and then I feel bad because I'm the one who gave him the pass in the first place. You know, look, and, and it got him murdered. The pass for right now on our show when we're around each other. He does it on its own. Hey, hey, I was going to say he does it. He doesn't. He doesn't ask for permission. No, I never have. <laughs> and, and that's don't the thing, start. though. Like, don't cuck yourself that way, man. No, Have and that's the thing is yourself. is that is that the way that I grew up, the way that that I feel, you know, the way that I can go into any community and feel safe. Like, I've never been to Watts or or or, or, or Compton where I felt, you know, in danger. You know, like like I, I can I can have a conversation with anyone, whether they're running for for state federal office or whether they're just one of the homies on the block. Like like Stefan said earlier, you know, I mean, to me, it's just I don't a matter. know how much I believe. If, I think if he brought that shit to the hood, I, I don't I think mean, the hood would uh, buy it. I don't think yeah, the hood would buy might, it. They might like some oranges and a tube sock. If he took that shit to Compton, it would not fly. We, we do have a question from the comments. Go ahead, Jack. What's oh, the question yeah. from the comments? Can Can Daju make lupia? Can I make lumpia? Lumpia. 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 Uh, it, it's, Is there a YouTube video for it? I'll try. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my! God. Uh, no. Listen, if you're gonna be Filipino, you got to know what lumpia is. You got to learn. It's like a tabat. Have you it's ever like had an egg roll. It's, an egg, it's roll. like an egg roll. It's delicious. Oh yeah, dude, I can do that. What about tabat? Have you ever had tabat? We tabat. should we should send them some balut. Balut? Yeah, we should oh, send dude. it. 
Uh, there's a video that, that uh, Jack has of me eating balut, actually. Disgusting. You ate balut? Yeah, there's a video. You sick mother. Uh, and and, 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 and a uh, balut is is like a, what what is it like? A, a, it's a, a fertilized duck egg. It's a fertilized or, duck oh, egg. Fertilized egg. Yeah, yeah. like... It's, yeah, it's kind of like a it's kind of like a late term abortion that you get to eat. Ex- exactly well, what it is. <laughs> no, that's one way to describe no, it. It is because there's yeah, there's, so, there's feathers and there's right. a beak and the whole nine yards. Oh, there's feathers. I didn't know about yeah, that. Yeah, man. yeah. They, if they play the video. <laughs> so, Daju, have you ever been to the Philippines? I'll resend it. No, like to though. Well, maybe our trans black buddy Brandon, he does some business in the Philippines. Maybe you guys could go on a little road trip. I think that would be oh, a, dude, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> well. All right, so so do you have a lot of Filipino friends? Oh God! Oh yeah, yeah you do. Oh yeah, I have uh, like pretty much. I I work in a I work in a restaurant that has like where there's only like four natural born Americans in there, and I'm not joking about this. And about ninety percent of them are uh, uh, of who works there are from the Philippines. Are from the Philippines? Do you our- work at a Filipino restaurant? <laughs> no, <laughs> just a uh, just a really bad like. Fast food, fa- uh, fast food tr- uh, kind of place, trying to be a bit more than what it is. Okay, all right. So, so, so you hang out with these Filipino kids. I mean, are you know your 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 coworkers? You hang out with the Filipinos after work and stuff, and they kind of accept you as uh, one of their own. Well, I think the I think the language barrier uh, kind of makes them a bit confused as to what I am actually talking about. <laughs> Do you speak Tagalog? <laughs> Tagalog. No. Tagalog. Oh, oh, man. I have a spelled. funny story. Uh, let's hear your about, funny story. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I want to hear a funny story. If you say it's funny and outrageous, I definitely want to hear it. What's your funny story? It might not be funny, but it's pretty outrageous. So I have a coffee shop like right across the right across the street from me on the corner. I go in there all the time. I'm like a big regular there. I just like to sit right. And what name do they put coffee. on your coffee cup? Huh? What name do they put on your coffee cup? Oh, that's not. It's not a Starbucks. Okay, all right. I might go be ahead. A basic white woman, but oh, dang. thank God you're not one of those. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but go ahead. Go ahead with your well, story. Uh, any, anyways, I go in there one day, and you know, I I just order my stuff, and I'm waiting for him to make my drink, and just texting, and a dude to my right, uh, he's in a full pink tracksuit. I'm I'm not joking, like. N- neon pink tracksuit in texas and i hear in my ear what does being filipino mean to you he said that to you yeah i hear that in my ear and i'm like eh (laughs) and he's like yeah what does that mean and i'm like well uh i i like what sorry my brain i i said to him well, I could go into a long philosophical conversation about what it means to be anything, but I have prepared no statements. And I kind of walked to the other side of the <laughs> other side of the bar, and the bartender who was in there is like, "Yeah, what do you mean?" And he started like lecturing me about being a second generation Italian American and like white privilege and stuff. What? And they were they like both kind of like cornered me and bombarded me, <laughs> and. I didn't even get a word in, and he's like, "You should stop saying those things." So what he saw you, you do is horrible and cultural appropriation. So this conversation that's happening in this coffee shop is over. Get out! And they kicked me out for being. I, I talked to transracial yeah. Filipino. Obviously, they saw one of your videos online or something. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. because oh, yeah. what, what well, was I the mean, first the video? is parked right out in <laughs> front of the place, so because <laughs> it, it's we're, we're right, we're right there. What was but, parked out uh, front? I talked to the owner, and that guy was fired like within the hour. <laughs> wow! So, so yeah, I, not, not I didn't all, want not, that to happen though. I just wanted to have like a talk because I feel like a lot of people don't know me personally and how I handle this kind of thing. And I consider you know any form of dysphoria to be mental illness. And how I feel, I can't help. And it's just like, would you say, would they have said the same thing to a transgendered person who they would be normally fine with? Like, are we going to address the ways that transgenders appropriate feminine identity and handle none of the struggles of being, of womanhood? Like what? 
Okay, now you. So, but, but there are their own struggles now, of being trans. Now, now, now you just yeah. said this. I didn't say this. You said it, but you said this dys- so much dysphoria in the LGBT community. Th- this dysphoria that you experience, you said yourself here a couple sentences ago that that you see it as a mental illness. Yeah, of course. What that people don't. Have no, he's belief. talking about for himself that that there's there's something that there's something not quite right in your own head that makes you have these strong feelings to be Filipino. Am I correct in saying well, it's, that? It's, it's not even it's not even the strong feelings. And whenever I say mental illness, I do I I do wish to speak on the behalf of you know the trans community it, as a whole. If you dislike yourself to the extent that you're willing to like mutilate your own body to become something else that you aren't, there's nothing healthy about that. I would agree. Well, and, and and I don't think that it's necessarily about not liking yourself. It's about accepting who you are, because I I don't I don't hate myself yeah. for being melanin you know deficient. Uh, I I accept the fact that I don't have a higher melanin count, but I identify as being black, and I don't see a problem with that. Hmm. You're probably I, you know the what 1%. I'm st- I'm starting to think that Daju on the phone is more sane than Brandon. And I'm not saying that Daju is insane. I'm just saying that he he makes more sense than what Brandon's. How do I not make right sense? You know, I, I don't know where to start. I think I really <laughs> don't. We don't I, have time I, I on think one a show. A lot of people people's misconception about about me it all all comes from my my uh, you know video media presence, like Tucker Carlson and uh, my Garen Flowers interview, and that they look very little into my writing and literature and what I've wrote about trans identity and the hypocrisy that kind of plagues the LGBT community. So uh, where, where are you writing about this at? Oh, uh, if you if you look on if you look on my face my Facebook, uh, the Transracialism Support Group, you can see that there is a uh, that there is kind of a, a separation. And whenever I'm coming out, how I feel like, and right after that, I start getting attacked and harassed, and it's not by the people you would think it is. It's by the LGBT community, and that's kind of where I started to understand and address the hypocrisy within the LGBT community and the intersectionality that comes with So you're saying that the LGBT and the intersectionality that kind of ruins, you know, ruins... You know, identity and so, makes us so all into enemies. So you're saying uh, that some of the, the simply existing, some of the hardest proponents that you face in your life in your life choices are from the LGBT community, and they're not ex- they're not accepting of the transracialism or, or or a mix of the transracialism and well, the trans gender gender. Well, this is this is the funny thing is I think that they would be perfectly fine with uh with with transracialism and i think they'd be very accepting of it but all of these arguments seem to echo the same thing it's my skin color uh it's my ethnicity currently Check your and privilege. the fact that uh i am i was born uh, caucasian is a automatic <laughs> evil on my part and i don't believe anyone should be made to feel guilty for simply existing but and do you- that's what now, these people hold on, want. hold on. Let's 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 rewind to that. So you're saying that you, when you identified as a white male, you felt guilty for being a white male. No, I, I don't feel guilty for being white, uh, but I'm saying that there's a there's a you know a thing in our culture where we're punishing like white identity for simply existing, and sometimes to the extent of teaching it to in schools, like to small kids, like white privilege and stuff. And it just makes me sad because I don't think anyone of any skin color or orientation should be made to feel guilty for simply existing. Like people, people alive today had absolutely nothing to do with like slavery hundreds of years ago. And then, you know, in the same breath, in the same breath, those people don't, uh, don't say a word about slavery going on in Africa or other third world countries to this day. So you don't think that in some way that that your feelings about that and your feelings the way the society looks on the white male that that didn't drive you to identify as a Filipino female? Um. Well, you know, uh, about me, me personally, 
I'll I'll do I'll do whatever I want to do, and I don't care who has a problem problem with it. And you know, you can call me anything, anything, just about anything you want. And I I just want to have you know deep meaningful conversations with those people in a way that doesn't you know make my whole identity or uh or uh, or I guess what what would you call that uh what community community and yeah. I want to yeah I want to talk in a way that doesn't make my community look evil as a whole like they think it is well how old are you now Daju uh 24 you're 24 and and when did you consciously make this decision that you were a Filipino Filipina Filipina well, if if I if I if I backtrack to what I was saying is uh, the as you know, like the mainstream media has very limited time to do interviews. Uh, my original interview, which started the whole thing, was about two hours, and they used the most sensationalist parts of it. I never claimed to be a Filipino. Uh, I claim to have a strong affinity for it, and in my close circle of friends, I can kind of let myself. Uh, you know, kind of role in in that in so, that culture for so, a second and play okay. make believe. Okay, so you're saying that the original interview that you did for two hours, they they edited it out yeah. to make you seem like one you were, minute. They made it one minute. They made it one minute on air, and they pretty much labeled you as a transracial Filipino, Filipina. Yeah. But you, but you're saying yeah. that's not you just have an affinity for it. You're a big fan of the Filipino culture, well, but you don't that's, necessarily. That's not a, uh, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry for interrupting. <laughs> well, I mean, if from your own mouth, in your own words, what is your identification? Who is Adam Wheeler today? Well, for for now, for now, you know, I have I have big plans for what I can for what I can become and what I can be so similar to that there would be no telling the difference. Uh, for now, I'm just Adam Wheeler, uh, like. He sounds like he's going to go super cyan or something. Super what? (laughs) Super cyan. Like he's going to change his whole form. Thank you. His whole form and person to become like. But but, but see, I I, I, I get where Adam's coming from because I'm calling you Adam because you just told me that you identify yourself as Adam Wheeler. And And, and you don't feel compelled to you know call me Adam. That's natural. And that's what I Well, what what I'm saying is do you feel like. Maybe later. I do enough like hormone replacement therapy or something and people can't tell the difference. I'll I'll have no problem with being called whatever feels natural to I don't people, I don't think we I don't, I don't think like we have held speech. Well, yeah, do, I, do you think do you think that you did that first interview for 2 hours and they kind of misconstrued your words a little bit and labeled you as one thing and then the media, the Tucker Carlsons and the other people start hitting you up and they're hitting you up as a transracial Filipina and then you just kind of respond in that role because that's what you've been labeled as? Yeah, uh, I I'd say so. Uh, though they don't misconstrue the, my trans identity, I don't openly identify as a Filipino, but I would like to get there so I can. You but know, you are live transgender. Life to live life as naturally as I I can. Okay, so so how many years? You're 24 years old now. How many years have you identified as transgender? Transgender. Uh, well, I came out whenever I was about seventeen years old, but 17. I had the the feelings before then, and I told myself when it came to that time, I would uh, come out. Okay. All right. So you're seventeen now. You're twenty four. So that's a good almost nine years or so, Tom. Right? Yeah. Um, that you've been mm-hmm. in this lifestyle. Well, I, I mean, it, what was your child? Well, like, like, what was your high school days like, and everything for Adam Wheeler? I mean. Did you have a have difficult, you know, early, you know, teen years and stuff like that? I mean, what was going on in in your life when you were younger? Yeah. It was it was really difficult for me. Uh You know, the the way I exp- the way I see uh, you know, public the public school system is it's really just a it's really just a hive mind collective that wants to destroy uh uh wants to destroy like unique identity. Uh, and if you're anything but the same thing as everyone else, you're going to get punished for it. So, uh, you know, growing up, I had a lot of abuse in my school life and I was bullied to the point where I 
couldn't I couldn't do it anymore. Bullied for on what and, what basis were they bullying? And I got pulled out. I never. And how did I your parents react to not past the hold on, hold on. not past the fifth grade? Not past. Okay, so you you left the schools at the fifth grade. And what were the other kids? Because kids can be mean. Kids can be cruel, and kids can do a oh, lot yeah. of damage. What were they bullying you for? Uh, it's. Well, a lot of people would call me, you know, retarded. I, I do have autism and it, uh, you know, it really made, it really made school tough. It was really hard to focus. And especially with the abuse that was happening to me, it was so hard to focus on schoolwork that I, I just, I just couldn't get anything done. And because you're in uh, an uncomfortable environment, your mind's in other places, you're, you're in self-defense yeah. mode. Uh, trying to yeah. preserve yourself, and now they want to ask you what algebra is, and your mind is in so many different places of just trying to maintain yourself, maintain your sanity, and maintain your composure when other kids are picking on you that you couldn't focus on school. Mm-hmm. So a- a- in fifth grade, you said you were pulled out of the uh, public school system. So did you proceed to do homeschooling or something from then on out? Well, we, we tried for a short while, but it really didn't work out. We didn't have the we we didn't really have the motivation to you know pursue that to its fullest so a lot of the things a lot of the things i know now are things that i've taught myself through you know khan academy and i'm still trying to i'm still trying to learn a lot of things uh i want to i want to get my ged so i can you know become a psychologist hmm. now for you i mean have you have you sought any psychiatric help for you personally, because I'm not um, talking about the transgender. I'm not talking about anything else. I'm talking about that. You, you had a rough childhood. That is, yeah. is not the norm. It's not the norm. At, well, I mean, it is, it, it, it happens a lot more than what you think, do. but, but what I'm saying is you had a rough childhood. You were, you were yanked from the public school system in, in the fifth grade. And I'm sure that that did some damage to your brain. I'm not talking about your sexuality at all. I'm just talking about that rough childhood. Have you talked to a therapist or a, psycho, a, a psychiatrist or anything about the issues that you had in your youth? Well, uh, uh, I, not, not then, but you know, a lot of, a, a lot of the issues that I've, that I've had have kind of, eh, I'm, Basically, I, I deal really heavily with uh, with depression, and yeah. you know, a, a couple months ago, it kind of it kind of reached a new height that it had never reached before. And then I started seeking uh, psychiatric help. Uh, and I have another story, uh, another story concerning the depression. Like, uh, there's there's this uh, site called uh, Asexualitic, and it's a it's it's a uh it's a forum for asexual people and there they allow you to create uh like public journals and stuff so i cr- i created one uh during the hype of this as a means to express myself and people and, and like within a few weeks later i actually got a call from the fbi because they were really worried about you know what i was thinking and what was going on in my head so I set up a date with them and bought us all coffee and we just talked for like an hour. It was, and what was their concern? What was the FBI's concern? Uh, well, it wasn't, it wasn't only that it's that I was, uh, I got into a debate about incels somehow on there. And I was talking about how it seems like a really oversimplified problem. And I think we should seriously have a conversation about, uh, how we're alienating people who would identify with that ideology uh and everyone got offended and i guess that they thought that i was like an advocate for them which i'm not uh but i think that there's a lot of misconceptions about incels now incels and, jack jack what is an incel um incel we were talking about that before that's basically the term uh stands for involuntary celibate um they believe that the reason that they're not getting um, the basically the physical. the physical, not just the physical though, just in general, the right. love um, from people yeah. is particularly it, it's a it is a coerced effort um, in order to make them unhappy. And, and and you have individuals like Roger Elliott and and uh, other people that yeah. have been fairly 
uh, prominent in the news, uh, Roger Elliott. Uh, Who is Roger Elliott? I'm not familiar he, with that. Elliot um, Rogers. Elliot Rogers. Elliot Rogers. Thank you. Sorry. Actually, uh, he in Isla Vista, in my hometown, actually, he uh, stabbed six individuals and shot several others. And um, he was uh, shot down by the police outside of the Seven uh, Eleven, uh, not too far from my house. Um, a few years back, and and he made a manifesto, fairly much saying, you know, that that he was a gentleman, and and that that he was being forced uh, to to not experience the college life, and use that as a excuse to stab six people and shoot several others. His his plan was to break into a sorority and shoot all the people inside of the sh- sororities. Um, and he went to several of them, but luckily they had barricaded the doors so that he couldn't. And he had, he identified yeah. online as you know, an incident. Uh, yes. You should you should watch the uh, Mumkey Jones videos about Elliot Roger. There he does like a whole extensive thing on it, uh, and he does it really well. So basically, when you when you when you got yanked out of the school in the fifth grade, did you have a lot of friends, or what was what was your your time from the time you got know. pulled out of out, out of the fifth grade I... to seventeen? You know, I I didn't I didn't have any friends at all in in the school system, uh, and you know it's it's kind of it's kind of funny. One one of my main bullies in school who like was responsible for some of the most physical abuse uh, had reached out to me on uh, on Facebook, and you know he he was telling me like how, how sorry he was about everything that had happened, and you know we we had a really long conversation but it's 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 something something that i really needed for closure yeah uh yeah like i i feel like you know kids you know the way the school system is set up is we we don't treat students on an individual level and it's just such a hive mind where everyone's trying to impress each other and oftentimes this results of results in the uh you know abuse of anyone who stands out Right. And I just want to yeah. I want to rewind something on something you said when Jake, you know, was asking you about, you know, identifying as Adam and you said that, you know, it it sounds like he's compelled to call you that. And I I don't want you to think that we won't call you what you want to be called, but I think it, from talking to you, I think you're confused on who you are or who you identify as and what you want to be called. And if you identify as something or or a person, or and you want to be identified as a specific name, then you know go by that and 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 own it. You know, well, don't... you know, I I I think in 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 Adam's defense, I think that some of these life decisions are made. They don't happen overnight, and they're oh, not they're not just cut and dry. And I think he, I oh, yeah. I believe that he's in a process of his mind where he's kind of in this limbo land of. Of of what I, I I Adam would I be wrong to say that you're probably not a hundred percent exactly sure as what defines you like you like you're you you have these feelings leaning in a lot of different directions but you're in this transitional period and mentally mental transition period of defining yourself and who you really are and and the reason why it kind of wavers a little bit is because you're not there in any direction you're kind of in this state of limbo in your life of what what you identify as and who you really are. You know, I'd say you're mostly right about that. And that and like, that's kind of what I was going that's, for. That's the biggest that's the that's you know, that's another thing with me is it's like, it's like I want to I have so I have so little aspirations academically and, you know, career-wise because I'm so focused on who I am as a human being. Mm-hmm. And uh and it's like I feel like I can't start start my life if I don't even exist as who I want to be. Well, I you know I I can tell you this, Adam. I think that you, I, and I know that I, I don't know the financial aspect of this or anything, but I think that I think that I see you as a young person. I say young person. I'm not identifying that as anything. I just see you as a young person that needs to talk. Trans age is a me. Yeah, well, that's I, my assigned age. Yeah, I think <laughs> yeah, he trans everything. Huh? I think that you you really need to invest some time uh, to sit down with somebody that understands the way the brain works and understands how you work and understands you and help you walk through this time in your life. I don't want to just, you know, you know, poke a couple jokes and make fun or whatever and just leave you hanging on, on the phone. 
yeah. I think I think that what I'm reading into this just by the few the brief moments that I've talked with you today is that you are somebody that's almost in this limbo land, and I think that you need some help. I think you need some help, and I'm not saying that you're you're batshit crazy or anything like that. I just think that you need to help. You need help from a professional that can help you walk through this stage in your life. You know, we all go through times in our life where we don't have it all figured out. I mean, that happens yeah. with everybody. And I mean, I don't, oh, yeah. uh, Tom. I still don't have half my life figured out right now. And I certainly weren't, wasn't even near figured out at twenty four. You know, and 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 you know, I think I think there's maybe some things in your past that maybe kind of. Um, hindered your development you know you didn't go through that whole high school phase and and have to work through uh, a a lot of issues that come up in high school you know a lot of that develops your character and you were pulled away from that and and i i just think that you know if you can if if you could my recommendation would be that you need you just need to talk and have somebody that can listen and have somebody that can you know help you help you work through the situation that you or or the mindset that you're in right now you know, help help you to like, find some clarity. And I think you know, this- I've I've gone to multiple uh like multiple psychiatrists and stuff like off and on, but the the problem with the problem with this is a lot of these places really can't like really can't help you. They're really just there to nod their head and have you talk for until they run out the clock and Basically, basically, it's just a scam for my medical insurance money. How about your parents? Uh, yeah, that's where I, I was going to. Yeah, it, I'm, it, I'm curious. Um, I'm sure you've come out to your parents about this. So, how do they <laughs> feel about it? And do you talk to them about it? I'm just curious if. Well, uh, well, I mean, I only have I, I only have my mom. Okay. Uh, I, I grew up in a single uh, single parent household. Uh, so, you know, the way my mom reacted initially to whenever I started talking about, uh, you know, being transgender was kind of like, uh, you know, typical, uh, Christian mom talk like, oh no, (laughs) they have camps for that and stuff. Right. So, so, so you come uh, from a, but eventually she accepted it. She, she doesn't quite understand it, but she accepts that. Those and, are the choices I want to make for myself. So, so you come from a religious uh, background, home. Yeah, I'm not religious myself, but I do respect religion. Okay, all right, all right. Well, I mean, uh, you know, no jokes here on my end. I mean, you know, it, it, your, your your story is definitely interesting, but I think Adam, the person, is a little bit more complicated than the than the one minute, two minute bits that happen in the media uh, that have that yeah. have garnered you some attention. And I know therapists, some th- some therapists don't work. Some of them do. I mean, um, I know people, sometimes you have to go through multiple therapists before they find somebody that understands them and somebody clicks with them. And, uh, you know, keep looking. Keep going out there. Keep pursuing it until you find somebody that you can click with and get some, you know, some talking down. Um, you know, I, I can understand in the position that you're in, if your mom is, you know, super religious and comes from that religious background, that the conversations with her might not, you might not be able to tell her everything that you want to say, you know? Yeah. So, so you, I, I, I feel, I feel like you need to get out there and there, there's somebody out there that you need to be able to uh, rely on and talk to and just communicate with and just, you know, a kind of a buddy in this, uh, in this stage of life uh, that you're going through that a lot of people find themselves in. And that's really, you know, all, all I, all I can say about that, Tom, anything? No, I agree. And then that's where it was kind of going with, you know, with the sentiment of Jake, I just didn't want you to think that, you have to, you know, when you're talking on this show, I don't want you to think that we're compelled to call you Adam because that's what's on your birth certificate. If you want to be called Daju, then that's what we'll refer to you as. But I, I do think I agree with Jake. I do think that there's, you know, there's some complexity to you that I still think that you're working through. And I agree with Jake. I think that you you've got to get with somebody that's going to understand you and help you get to where you want to ultimately get to. Because ultimately, you sound like you know you sound like a nice person. You seem like you're level headed, um, and I think that, like I said, I think there's just some complexity to you that you gotta you need help figuring. Yeah, out. and I, I think I think I think I think um, you know I I don't mean to be uh, disrespectful in saying this, but I think Adam has some confusion in what's going on in his life, and he just needs to some help working that. Steph, you have anything to say? Who wasn't confused at twenty four? 
24? It, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I wasn't confused about my gender or, or about my my ethnic background or anything like that. But you're confused but about life. I was, fuck yeah, I yeah. was. I didn't have it figured out at all. Not even a, remotely close to figured out. You know, I thought I knew everything and I thought I had it figured out, but. I still fuck. get confused sometimes. And I'm 42. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I think life's not on- life is not simple, not that's, at all. That's probably the onset of dementia at your age, but at 24, <laughs> so aren't we the same different. age, fucker? Yeah, I'm actually right. older. And, and the last question is, who's <laughs> on your shirt there, Adam? Oh, it's the glorious, uh, glorious leader Kim Jong Il, okay. of course. Okay. <laughs> oh, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Now, I gotta ask because that's obviously a Korea uh, reference. You, you're trans Filipino, <laughs> right? So what what are your thoughts on Duarte? Yeah. Why, why, are you why saying don't I'm you bi- have Korean? I, 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 yeah, he's bi Korean, Brandon. We're just leaving it there. He's bi Korean too. <laughs> I mean, you know, like, oh, like no. Duarte <laughs> should be your man. supreme leader, right? Bi like... Korean boy. <laughs> okay, all right, Adam. I'll tell you what. I think we're gonna let you go. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for talking to us, and uh, we wish you the best. All right, buddy. All right. Hey, let me plug my stuff. <laughs> oh, sure. Go ahead. Okay. He's going to plug yeah, his lumpia. Boys. So uh, go to the Transracialism Support Group. You can also find it on Twitter. Uh, trying to start up a streaming gig in uh, possibly a podcast of my own. So if you're interested in uh, the process of helping out or or want to give advice, feel free to come on over. Bring all the memes. Bring drinks. And uh, yeah. All right, man. All right, all right, uh, Adam. We will talk to you. Fun. All right, we will talk to you later. All right, you have a good one, Thank Adam. Thank you for your time, brother. All right, all right, you too. Wait a second. Uh, who is what's his name? Who? Jared, Brand- Jack. Brandon, Jack? Jack, Brandon, Jack. or Jack? Brandon and Jack. What's Those are doing? the two guys you've been what's talking to. What you doing to. later, Jack? Jack, what oh, are you doing what are you later? Doing later, Jack. Yeah, what? Is that what it was asked? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. What you doing later, matey? Don't don't you think I forgot about you? Oh, that's oh. right. Jack, you're into into tiny Filipino women, aren't you? Sort of. Well, no. there you go. Hey, tiny. That's that's a misconception. It's just that they have shallow vaginas. <laughs> Jack, are you into? Hey, that's right up your alley, Jack. Jack, are you into docking? No. <laughs> okay. I. Maybe. maybe. Oh, that, was maybe. <laughs> that wasn't yeah. a hard no. Yeah, that wasn't a hard no. That was like a uh, eh, maybe. No, I was going to no, say with uh, your podcast and stuff. Uh, Stop um, playing games and be a gentleman. I guess for Jack, it depends on who has the foreskin. Okay, all right, all right. All right, Adam, we'll talk to you later, buddy. You you can mess, right. you, you feel free to message Jack off um, when when you're off the show anytime you want. Anytime you want. He loves to chat. <laughs> to Jack yeah, Jack loves to talk. Can you yeah. please post all correspondence though? Yeah, we want to know where this goes. <laughs> yeah. That's for sure. I only have one correspondent for you, Bucko. <laughs> okay. Oh. oh. All right, Jack. Yeah. I'm pretty all sure right, that was one towards Jack. All right, well, uh, that went in a different direction than I expected it to go. Yep. Yeah. I mean, uh, I don't know. Uh, what did you guys think? I think he's confused. I think there's a lot of confusion there. A lot. I think lot he doesn't it. know really what he wants. I think this is the only time in history where if you feel like you want to be <laughs> something else, you can be whatever the fuck you want to be. You and can. It, People take it literally. Well, and I and I think he, I don't. Yeah. But people take that literally. And I and I think you know Jake touched upon it with him when he talked about mental. He associated it with a mental illness. I thought that was kind of obvious. Yeah, and I, and I'm not saying by any means that in the you know the transgender community, but obviously if the the LGBTQ community is not supportive of whatever he's doing, there's obviously something that. Whatever they've seen in writing or on his on his posts or blogs, as a, as a young white male, to strive to be, and I know we keep playing off the Filipino thing, but to strive to be something that you are not is something that I can understand in human nature. But the things that you're like, I strive to be a fucking millionaire. I don't have a million dollars, but of course it'd be nice to fucking have it. But I also understand that if I don't have a million dollars, I'm not a millionaire. Right. So if you strive to be a woman, but you don't have a vagina, it sounds good, but I don't have. 
The vagina is easier to deal with than the race, though. Mm. It really is. What happened to this fucking show when it used to be funny? I thought it was hilarious. We did have some it was fun, a great was show. Funny parts tonight. A little bit. Of I everything. don't know, man. I do have a video um, that that the exec producer wanted to show of him actually ingesting balut. Really? We're gonna watch if you that. Want. You That's... don't have to. It was more of a time filler, but we're at the end of the show. Yeah. Uh, okay. There he is, and oh, there it is. Okay. Oh, that's there, what he looks there's like. There's no, no audio. Beard on. Yeah, that's what Brandon looks like with no beard. That's what he looks like normal. And you can see his glorious ebony skin shining through. But there's no audio to that. So, what did that yeah, balut taste like, Brandon? It was crunchy. It was crunchy. I like how the video is sideways on the side of the screen. Yeah, my it's awesome. My photographer at the time didn't understand the whole hor- horizontal thing. So, but you ate the whole thing. Yeah, and it, it tasted like. A hard boiled egg is just crunchy. Disgusting. No. A crunchy hard boiled egg. Yeah, the, the the little stand had, you know, some some uh spices that you could add onto it and a little bit of uh lemon juice and it was good. Nip. And then we had like um uh, 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 worms oh, on a on a stick and there were there were barbecued and we you know, we went into a little farmer's market there. We had a mango pizza that was pretty good. I there can't was a mango even watch festival. him do this. Tell me when it's over. That's just disgusting. I'd rather watch a white chick fetch a ball. It, it was. It was. <laughs> it was interesting. I mean, like, and and you know, um, the, our quest for uh, Tabat was pretty fun. Uh, okay. All right. <laughs> All right. We're like, cutting no, you no, off. Don't change it. Don't change it. Wait. Wait. Let's. Oh. Oh. Let's watch Brandon. Hey, it Look. looks like he's about ready to throw up. It, it, whenever he didn't tell me what it was before we wait, got he it. didn't tell you what it was. And when you pulled the skin back or the shell back, what, you, you saw a beak staring a... back at you. Did yeah, you just was... think it was a hard boiled egg? Yeah, it was all I you know they just sell them on the side he of the road. He didn't eat it. He did. I just watched the whole video. He didn't he fucking bite, eat it. He, threw it away. he he took a bite and then he spit the bite into his hand <laughs> and he took what was in his hand and fucking threw it in the oh, trash. Oh, so he pulled the Aaron. Yes. <laughs> pulled the Aaron. Oh, Aaron with the hot chili. Oh, yeah. I got a video that's way more interesting. Jack, put up my screen. All right, ready? Here we go. You see it? Good boy. Good boy. You ready? Good boy. Oh yeah. There you go. Go. What in the, the fuck are we watching? Are we watching right here? See, that's why white women are awesome. <laughs> that's why they're porn stars. Well, first stars. she was a boy, and now she's a girl. Oh, you, you call every dog good boy. And then he's like, at the end, he yeah, called her a girl. Good, good girl. White did, women are yeah, awesome. Well, speaking of, speaking of, did you guys see what happened to Lloyd's of London this past weekend? I did, and then, you know, I didn't load that video in here, but uh, and and but yeah, so Banksy. Uh, did I say it right, Banksy? Banksy, yes. yep. Yeah, the famous street artist that's uh, uh, friends with, you know, some other person that I'm loosely affiliated with. Um, <laughs> anyways, uh, Banksy, he had this he had this painting that went for sale, and I've heard all kinds of different numbers. I think it's $1.3 million. 1.4. 1. 1. 1.4. And he sold, well, he made this painting years ago, I guess. and he Somebody he, found it. Somebody found it. They put it up at auction at Smothers Bees. Smother Bees. Sotherbees. Smother, Sotherbees, that one. And uh, basically, the second that it sold, he had built into the painting, the, into the frame, a paper shredder right. that shredded the, this million-dollar painting that just sold and, and shredded it as the auction closed. Yeah. He doesn't agree on putting financial value into his artwork. No, and, like and basically, I, I if, you find find his, if you find his artwork, you just better I hold on it. to it. Oh, you pretty, have it? That's pretty yeah, much you have how it. he play, looks at Play it if you have it. Because it was it was pretty interesting, and that's just a minor story, but you know, it, it was crazy, and it was the look on everybody. Yeah, there you go. Can you make that a full screen? Yeah. Uh, hold on. Sorry. Te- Please hold. Wow. While Jack has another technical Smooth difficulty. Smooth well, well, here, buddy. While he's doing that, I believe the Legal Defense Fund is going to be uh, hosting a fundraiser where, if you would like to get your poinsettias or your wreaths for the holiday season. Please put your what orders. Did you, what did you What'd call, you call that? What, that plant? What did you call it? What, the wreaths? Nope, the other plant. Uh, Say it again. Poinsettias? Uh, no, it's, it's not. It's like a quinceanera yeah, plant. It's a plant that had a quinceanera. <laughs> it's a poinsettia. <laughs> poinsettia, okay. Not a poinsettia. <laughs> there you go. I was going to say, go. I want to make sure we're clear on what we're raffling off. Oh, we're not raffling anything. If, if you, or whatever. If you... Uh, we'll, we'll uh, have a link up um, probably in the next day or two. But if you uh, buy your uh, uh, holiday 
poinsettia. poinsettia. Uh, from us, then uh, a a portion of the donation, I believe, like three or four dollars, will be going towards the legal defense fund. So poinsettias and wreaths. Yes, uh, and and that'll go through till the end of the month. Awesome. All right, quick question. I know we got to wrap this up. Uh, you know we were supposed to do our movie review of that movie, but <gasps> yes, you know I don't think do we have time. It. No, we really don't have no, time. No, it's good. Okay, I guess that's a movie review. It was good. <laughs> I was leaving it at that. What the heck? What movie are we speaking of? <sighs> a Star is Born. I haven't seen it yet. It is Hush. so good. It, 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 I have so a good. spoiler alert. Yeah. It was no go- spoiler alert. Saying Fuck that, that it's shit. good is not a spoiler alert. No. I'm nope. Just letting people you know. can say it was good, great, fantastic. I've heard. I cried the- for 20 minutes straight. I've In heard that it. case, I loved Venom. <laughs> I literally cried for 20 minutes straight. When did you see it? I didn't cry for 20 minutes, but On it was awesome. Thursday, Wednesday. Video? It came out. We we watched it before it went, like, the pre. You fucker. We were supposed to all go see it together. Could you know? all, all, could all, all cry all, together. See I'll tell you. That movie? A Star we is Born. A Star is Born. We were to see that movie well, together. Well, I went and saw it. I it went was saw, good. I, I'll tell you what. I think that it's going to be up for definitely some Oscar nominations. I thought it could have been better. Did it give you a man boner? No, it sure did not. <laughs> um, I I thought Lady Gaga was really good. I thought Lady Gaga. I was really impressed with Lady Gaga. Did you cry? No, not a tear. No, he, not even like a knot in your throat. He doesn't no. cry unless bit. it's a sad no. dog movie. And you know why I didn't cry? Because they lost me. <laughs> Can I talk about one scene without giving the movie away? Yes. No, I, yeah, I already give the spoiler. No, nope, don't do it. No, no, you won't even know. It's <laughs> it's technical. It's a technical thing. But it's my, a technical thing. Yeah, my thing about it, and, and believe me, believe me, it's good enough that it. I believe it's going to win some awards. I believe that it's going to get some Oscars and all that kind of stuff. I thought it could have been better. Like the, the the first time that you know, because obviously it's a love story about Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga. I forget their their names, their characters, but whatever. It's a love story about them too. And so they they have the typical movie scene where the guy sees the girl singing in some sees the girl singing in some smoky club, and he falls instantly in love. My problem with it is that I didn't think that her performance at that point in the movie was one that would give you goosebumps and be one that'd be like, <laughs> oh, my God, that was the best song ever. She sang, and I was just like, eh. She was probably way better in American Horror Story. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. That movie was really good. I cried for 20 minutes straight. I could not stop crying. Somebody was talking about this weekend. They did say it was a great movie. I've, really I've seen a lot of people things say it's a great movie. I think it's a good movie. I think it's gonna. I think it's Academy Award worthy. For him, I just it was I think it could have been stuff. better. For him, it was technical stuff. I like it, it all. No, I would thought be, the song sucked. Would it be Would it be better if you were a trans Filipina woman? Possibly, possibly, possibly. Video loaded. What video? The video they just tried to play with Banksy. Yes. Yeah. Oh, we, we already did. Well, that. We obviously haven't moved on past that. Okay. Never mind then. Well, fucking play it. I mean, you know, we're we're in this nether. Okay, go. And do you have audio? I would hope so. That means I don't know. That means no, because I don't hear anything. Well, anyways, there's yeah. I just hear just buzzing on your computer. That's all I hear. You know, very. This flow is this show is very gender fluid. Uh, but there it is. There's the painting from Banksy at Southern Southern Bees Southern Bees. And, of course, they're auctioning it off, and apparently it went for $1.3 million, and there it is in the frame. And so, you know, basically just the auctioneers calling out, getting the prices, and it goes up, and we'll see them hit the gavel, and you'll see what happens to this uh, picture. It, 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 I thought there was this pretty ingenious on Banksy's, Banksy's part, right. but the, the, but I wondered the, the – the, And there, there it, goes. it goes. It's getting shredded. Oh. But the thing is, is like I don't know if I believe this. <laughs> Everybody, I mean, everybody. Oh, yes, it. it's a lot. Yeah, it absolutely happened. And, I know and, it actually happened. Right. I know it actually happened. Well, I don't okay, believe, but I don't know if I believe this scenario. Know, how did they know he to in, shred it? There well, they, was he was in the there. Somebody they was said, in there. Fired yeah, they, it off. They said security detained somebody. In but the what I'm saying lady. is, Banksy, the way that his his pieces get out there is like it's left on a corner somewhere, or he sprays it on a wall, and this particular piece. I mean, listen, I'm, I'm thinking of the technology to go into an RF transmitter to activate the batteries on a paper shredder to make this happen. How long has this been picture been sitting around? I mean, what was the battery shelf life on this day? There thing? was a video leaked of him actually making the frame. I know. Well, we just played it. Released it. Oh, somebody yeah. just he released said, it. Yeah. Now somebody's saying that the the auction house may have been in on it. Well, that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking this is something. They had they're, to they're have, some type of an inside how job. How could they not? 
I don't know. I mean, batteries can last a long time in storage, I guess. You know what I mean? Can we talk about how shitty the guy who paid the $1.4 million must feel? That's hilarious. The thing is, is the painting is worth even more now. Exactly. It, 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 that's what they the say, shredding, but now you have, like, shreddings of a painting. That's that okay. You. But completely the, shred. It stopped halfway. It stopped halfway. That was intentional. Okay. I know Canvas, and you're not going to fix that. That was a canvas. There, it, it, it's not to be about fixed. fixing it. You know, Banksy says that you know that he, he didn't want people making money off of his paintings. Right. Blah blah blah. I mean, he, he's the same guy that went out on a street corner in Central Park and sold his original paintings at sixty dollars a piece to the public, and people didn't know if they're real, they're fake. But he was selling original paintings at sixty dollars a pop. And so this is supposed to be his protest about people making these millions of dollars off of his paintings. Right. Okay. But I think it's I think it's another one of his like just moves because I mean re- in reality this painting is going to be worth more money now that it was the Banksy it, like the shredding of the painting is part of the art of the oh, painting itself. Oh, somebody will somebody will right. pay multi that would be multi million dollars now for this. For I have shredded. a lot of respect for for his uh, stand against you know capitalism and the, the idea that this is uh, artwork for the people. Well, Wait, aren't Wait, you an anarcho capitalist? I am. Wait, but, I, but did you say? I, I do oh my god, these guys! All right, I, I just heard on. you say something all about right. capitalism. He fucking right. sells his shit in Nordstroms. What are you talking about? They make T-shirts and shit all day he long with Banksy. Make money off of that. Are you fucking kidding me? He's got to be making money. He's got to be making. If they're using, he's his just got to be. If either, if they're using his images and whatnot, he's got to be making money. There's no way. Come on, man. All right, let's uh, let's wrap this up with a quick interview with Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper, where they both tell each other that they're fucking unicorns and they're the most talented people ever, and they shit skittles out their asses and all that stuff. Okay. It's what it's what all actors of this do. Movie was a, uh, was really just a love story, you know, and two people um, honestly in love with each other and what that means. I did a cancer fundraiser. I performed oh, that congratulations. night. Congratulations! Bradley was in the audience, and the next day he wanted to meet me. And he came over, and you know, I looked in his eyes, and I just had an instant connection with him. And he was and God. We were so comfortable together. He made me feel so comfortable. He said to me, "Do you mind if we sing together?" I said, "Sure." And then he opened his mouth to sing. Black eyes open wide. I was blown away by his voice because he sings from his gut. He sings from his soul. I was overwhelmed with his ability to tell. Sounded extremely average to me, but let's keep going. Story to his voice. And that's why I wanted to do this, was because I believed in him so much. And Cooper believed in her, too. It's one thing to be talented <laughs> and then to harness that talent. They believe it. Like, like they found new religion. They're believing in each other so much on this movie. Chose her I can't watch this. I can't watch actors suck each other vessel. dicks in interviews and for hours Cooper and hours. Cooper believes her, too. And the reason why he had to do that is because he actually, he, when he went to meet with her, what they're leaving out is he actually had to convince the studio to allow Lady Gaga to be in the movie because that wasn't by that's why the, the he asked to sing with her and then they used that to pitch the idea to the studio and the studio liked it. So oh, I'm on set. I'm an actress. And Bradley Cooper, even though he's my friend, my dear friend, I was able to go, Oh my gosh, this is new. This is real. This yeah, it's real. Okay, screw their interviews. They... I can't stand listening to stars. Just what? <laughs> Crack me up. I can't stand that. Every, every, every movie that you see that comes out when it's two stars talking about each other, right. it's the same shit. It's like, yeah, he's the best thing. and He's amazing. He's the second coming of Christ. He shit skittles and all everything's fucking, you know, like everybody's the most amazing thing ever. No, you're fucking actors in a movie. The movie's good, though. <laughs> I just think it's I just funny can't that stand these assholes. I just think it's funny. She's like my dear friend. That was their first time meeting each other. They yeah, never, they've never met each other before. What's even more funny is the fact that he describes great as shitting skittles. Shitting skittles. Yeah. Could you imagine if you shit skittles? skittles? Yeah, I'd be on TV. You'd be able to taste the rainbow. <laughs> taste the rainbow. I don't know that Bradley I would Cooper's taste God. My, taste my well, you own would taste rainbow. your own rainbow. Yeah, I, I thought wouldn't. that was kind of weird. You'd, if you shat, if you shat Skittles, you'd stand on your head all day long. <laughs> okay, <laughs> shitting into my. I get it. I, I get it. It took a second, but I picked it up. Oh man. Uh, anyways, it was a great movie. You should watch it. Yeah, it's gonna be. We're gonna be Just hearing take about this tissues with year. you if you're. If if sensitive. If you just cry. Or if you like people shitting Skittles. <laughs> yeah. That sounds like something you might need to do. Like, if you want a good cry, 
watch it. I'd probably watch Sitting Skittles more than it's that only movie. females that go to the movies that want a good cry. Sometimes you need a good cry out, and that was a good cry. You had a Tom cry. Well, no. not quite. <laughs> is it now? Is it a movie that you need to see in the theaters, or should would it be worth waiting? Uh no, or? I'd watch it in the theaters. By I, the I way, think Tom because Cry's of the music and everything, I would. With the Tom, music and everything, yeah, definitely in the theaters. Tom I wouldn't Car- wait. To, Tom Cruise usually up. involve kissing a man before you cry. No, I think it's yeah, maybe I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I think that was. I don't remember. <laughs> All right, well, this show is way too late, way too long, way too many Filipino penis vagina transition the P banners, the, the P and the P. A lot of banners. The there was a lot of banner talk. Docking. Get it docking, right. docking. Well, I didn't know there was an actual term. Neither I accidentally I. said that. <laughs> you were right. That was, you know. Well, All that's right. everything. All right, guys. Good, Good night, night, everybody. Peace. Anything you want to plug, Brandon, before we leave? Uh, what the fuck is on the screen right now? Yeah. Oh, we're, we're, we're going to be having a raffle soon for the first five coins. We will be doing that. <laughs> Why uh, does it say I, he I, died this year? I don't know, but I was expecting uh, Brandon to, 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 to plug his weed hook up again. Oh, yeah, and uh, Goodfellows Red Rum, uh, if you're in uh, Riverside or Corona. Wait know. a minute. The, the, it's Goodfellows Red Rum? Well, either one. It depends if you're in uh, Riverside or if you're in Corona. Which one's oh, which? Oh, God. The Corona's Goodfellows in 90. He doesn't even know. He's I'm just drown, I'm drowning him out with the music. We're dead. <laughs> Good what? night. Good night. Till next.